as soon as we left yesterday, like by the time I like turned that first corner, my phone was ringing. I was like, oh shit, Mark. And we're like yelling at each other how excited we are. <laughs> yeah. He's laughing. You guys are hilarious. All three of you <laughs> together. <laughs> like the, you're all different the, minds. The pain <laughs> that you are describing is ancient wisdom. I think it's yeah. second yeah. grade, right? Yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. second grade and you now you got a, a box shoe in, shoe on you. You're sitting in a desk and now you're sitting at that desk for eight hours a day. You have this one life to live. And you don't want to take any steps backwards. You told me out there on the turf that I got a one-year-old that mm -hmm. I hold and I coddle and I want to get on the fucking ground with him. And you have that freedom to do that now. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, no matter what it is, no, no point figures or nothing, that fucking birthright was taken from you and you got it back now. When you stretch it and the transferability of the stretch goes immediately to the way you swing, strike, walk, run, throw, kick, then you wasting no time. When you're on the field, you're in <laughs> Hell's Kitchen, dude. <laughs> you're in it right there. That's the only thing that gives you that experience. There's no drill in the weight room for that moment. Four or five years ago, we threw out about $70,000 of equipment. Mm. And when I say throw it out, I put it on the street. Do you guys have any um, recommendations for if somebody, if a kid is on a tablet? What the f took you guys so long to get here? <laughs> because I am so grateful that we've all met and you guys have come out here. Power Project family, how's it going? Now, we have partnered with Stan Efferding, the Stan Efferding. If you don't know who he is, you better go check it out. But he owns Vertical Meals, which we eat and we love. But one of the big reasons why we love Vertical Meals, and we know that you will too, is so many people talk about how difficult it is to meal prep, how busy my life is, so I don't have time to cook healthy food. I have excuses, so I run to McDonald's because I don't have food at home. Well, <laughs> that's why... Vertical Meals is here for you. They have so many amazing meal options, tasty meal options. They have freaking cinnamon rolls, chicken empanadas, steak and eggs, monster mash. They have everything you're going to need. That's why you got to go to Vertical Meals so that you don't have to think about meal prep anymore. Andrew, how do they get it? Yes, that's over at verticaldiet.com. And at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Take advantage of this. Make sure you guys get like a week or two or three or four and use promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off that entire order. Uh, links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. And, Ready, Ron? And we're rolling. Yeah, oh. go for it. All right. Everybody's got to be serious. You guys got your serious faces on? <laughs> Hold, on serious. Hold on, <laughs> super serious. <laughs> hey, what what is going on with uh, the way that people move? Like, what you know? Um, years ago, I met uh, Kelly Sturette, and I was pursuing powerlifting. I was going after it with everything I had. I hit a nine hundred forty-two pound squat. Um, I was really working on my movement. I was trying to figure things out, and I actually recognized that I had a lot more power and a lot more strength when my feet were straight. A lot of people weren't in agreement with me. I kept thinking about it and working on it. I had this wide stance, and I started finding some people that did agree with the method and did agree with what, what I was doing with these squats. And one of those people was Kelly Sturette, who talked a lot about straight feet. So I went from a 942-pound squat Kelly helped me uh, correct some issues in my back, not necessarily back pain, but just technique and form. Um, I would round over a lot in my squat and Kelly was just like, hey, let, let's have you, I was overarching. I, I would have a huge bow in my back every time I would squat and that was leading me to round over actually when I went to do my lift. Anyway, long story short, he shows me some movement patterns. I practice these movement patterns. I get my hips to open up a little bit. And a 942-pound squat, which was already pretty good at the time, turns into a 1,080 squat, which is the most I ever lifted. Mm -hmm. I recognize then that your movement pattern is tremendously crucial. And mm -hmm. Kelly was a guy that would whack me, like literally hit me, punch me in the stomach uh, if I wasn't standing the right way and, and things like that. And I noticed that you guys have a lot of that implementation of the things that you guys are doing. What is wrong with our society? Like what, what is uh, some things for people to kind of hone in on? Why are people standing so wrong? Like how did we get to this point? <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a broad question. It's a combination of sedentary lifestyle. So you didn't see this stuff in the 50s. Um, and then these cool recliners started to come out. And then the cars got a little bit more comfy and... Uh, and then, you know, and then in the 70s, Arnold and all those guys started. And, uh, and you know, they just fed this pattern we call WOTA, this mathematical pattern. And um, 
it's just our society now, the beds, the shoes, the patterns, and the training create this sort of epic failure mm. at the joint level. You know, talking about the uh, the shoes, I think that's a great visual for people. So, you know, you stuff your feet into a shoe that doesn't allow your toe to spread. Mm -hmm. And our feet should look a little bit more like our hands, but our mm -hmm. feet have really gotten mangled. Our toes are kind of overlapped and people's toes are all mm -hmm. uh, jacked up. But if you think about like sitting and some of these other things that we're doing, we're kind of stuffing ourselves in a position every single day that we're not supposed to be in. And if we are supposed to be in it, it would be just momentarily, just for maybe a few minutes a day. It wouldn't be something that we would really just sit in this fixed position for mm -hmm. long periods of time, right? Yeah. Yeah, those those sitting marathons that we all have to go through, whether it's in a car or in a desk at work or at school, we would want to be going through that sitting marathon on the ground mm -hmm. in some of those ancient shapes that are across culture all over the world, whether you look at crisscross applesauce, seiza, samurai, cowboy posture. These are shapes that kids get into instinctively that they're not taught how to do, and it's, you know, the kid in Cleveland or a kid in Bangladesh are both getting into these shapes. So it's not that sitting or rest is bad for us. It's actually good for us. It's the opposite side of movement, and it's much needed to keep this complex moving system tuned up. So where we should be resting is on the ground. That takes us now and takes us from the chair, which is that front chain dominant. Picture yourself sitting in a recliner, folks, and your hips are underneath your ribs. And it takes that, and now it moves the hip behind the rib. Mm. So you stay in a back chain dominant posture as you're getting that parasympathetic system to turn on. You look down at the bottom, at the foot, at the platform, like we've talked about these last couple of days, how crucial it is that the way that foot starts is going to allow the ball and sockets up the column to behave correctly. But now you look at the way most shoes are designed, super narrow toe box, mm. which immediately makes you kind of want to start to flare your foot, sort of like a flip-flop. You start to point your toes out. You start out. to point yeah. your toes out. That starts to take that ankle and move it down and in, take that shin down and in. Like we've shown in the patterns where now you're away from the security. You're not setting that good bow. You're not letting that ankle get into that back outside corner of the socket. Everybody's foot starting to get flare. Their ankle starting to tuck down and in. Big picture concept is it's compression, right? The hips are being pushed underneath the ribs, they're being pushed forward. The ball and socket columns are being suffocated and the platform at the, at the bottom is just giving out. The arch mm. is collapsing now. So the majority of humans you'll see that have chosen to, war, you know, to wear a bad shoe, I, we don't know, we were putting shoes since we're kids, or they start to sit for a long time starting in first, second grade. And then all of a sudden these little aches and pains start to add up, like Gilly said, from the 50s till now, the search for comfort has only been heightened, mm -hmm. right? The, the the iPads are, you know, better than ever, the phone. So everything's kind of feeding this front chain dominant behavior. If we know that, we can make smarter choices by going from, you know, a sitting desk to a floor desk, changing your shoe option to give you a little more toe space, let the feet start to get corrected and let the, the body get back to its decompressed state. Yeah, you know, well, I got a good analogy for that, and, uh, is which is if you buy a a car comes with tires. If you buy a trailer, it comes with tires. And there's a manufacturer's uh, specific amount of pounds you put in that tire. When you look at Goda, it's the tires on that number. When you look at Woda, it's a flat tire. Mm. What's Goda and Woda? Go Goda is the greatest of all time actions, and Woda is the worst of all time actions. So it's you know it's just something that we created to to describe it. it right. It's easy. It's easy to teach. We all know what the goat is, and you know, yeah. so it was easy to kind of feed off of that. One of the other things too, when me and Gilly was like building this whole thing out and stuff, and you know, he came to me with these concepts and stuff. I my wife was pregnant at the time, and we ended up having two kids like back to back, and um, I got to see the natural. Uh, mm -hmm. Like we was able to go back to nature. My wife would call me on her way to school and be like, their shoes are already off. They don't want to wear the shoes. They didn't want to have them on because it's almost like this instinctive like knowledge that they have to protect themselves. It's How many eight. kids you see at like like mm. going around town, yeah. they got one shoe on. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> They're always right. pulling them off. It's yeah. always been right there in front mm -hmm. of us. And what we did is j we just started to pay homage to nature. Mm. You know, we looked at the babies and the indigenous and, and they don't, they got a piece of leather strapped on their foot. And it is, think about putting your hand in some kind of device that would keep the hand closed off all day and then take it off in the evening and, and see how you would feel. It's going to start affecting the chain. You're going to, you know, if you, especially if you had to load, 
your hand all day. Yeah, I find know. it really interesting, like what we, <clears throat> like in modern day, like what we search for and what we're seeking uh, to help solve a problem is like kind of the opposite of what we need. Like you're you're thinking, I'm in pain. This hurts. My back hurts. Uh, I need to sit down. I need to rest. I need mm -hmm. to, and that sometimes can be beneficial, but for how long? Mm -hmm. um, do you have to sit down every 10 minutes because your back hurts? Well, that that means that something's off. Well, that means that something's it's, wrong, it's, right? It's how it's how we rest is the problem because what we what we go to for comfort has become the actual source of the problem. It codes the wrong movement. Yeah, yeah. like That'll taking diabetic medication or something like that. It might be yeah. better to, to just be on a diet, be on a plan. Yeah, that's yeah. going to assist yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark. The original name of the company was called Primal Wisdom Theory. <laughs> It was a complete marketing failure, but <laughs> but um, the the he's laughing. You guys are hilarious, pain, all three of you the, together. The, it's like you're all different the, minds. The pain that you are describing is ancient wisdom. Mm. So the wisdom is there in the form of pain, the language of kinesthetics, and it's telling you that you have been misbehaving by being in the front chain. Mm. So the answer is to get in the back chain. But nobody has the information because nobody did it the way we did it. We took the people who were anti-fragile and endurance durable, and we took that, which is like best practices rule, and mm. we reverse engineered it. And what we found was late crawling super babies, indigenous people, super athletes like Michael Jordan, and 105-year-olds like Hurricane Julia Hawkins at the track and field world championships. What do you mean by uh, wisdom being connected to pain? You want to take that? I mean, I think like you just said, it's something letting you know that something's up. Like I know for from my old my own experience, and when I finally met these guys, all the things that I was trying to fix in my body from tracking back to like freshman year in high school, like I'd been throwing my back out since I was young, and and none of that ever made sense to me. But it was always something that I was searching for an answer, and that's what really brings Goda to the table is that. This is a man who had his his back, you know, give out on him, and that there led him on a journey mm. to go find that wisdom, to go deepen his knowledge on well, what's causing this? To be honest, it's not something that the Karuba have to deal with, or the 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 Yanomami in the in the Amazon or the Hadza. If you never have back pain, you never have to go seek it out. So now we're in an interesting predicament here where we're in this, you know, comfort cushioned world and we have this great communication across the globe, but we're more wrecked than ever mm. because we haven't been able to still take what keeps the Karubo and the Yanomami safe. And we haven't been able to bring that into our movement diet. You're someone who's seeing what the indigenous do from a from a diet standpoint and you're bringing it into the real world. We're just doing that from a movement yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Let, let me what, add, let what, me add to that. Um, um, because I've been doing this for 23 years, this, this recode. Um, I never used to know that that pain that I was having while I was sleeping in my back and my hips and my knees was the wisdom. So nobody ever told me that. You know, if you're in pain when you're sleeping or if you have to wake up because you're in pain at a joint, that's a problem. That's the ancient language. Mm -hmm. Linguistics came last. It's always been see, feel. You know, during the evolutionary pro chain, but um, timeline. But I mean, my answer to that is the answers are there for you. Your ancestors paid the ultimate price by giving you this wisdom in the form of kinesthetic feelings, and we ignore that. Yeah, it, exactly. Because it's it's like almost like a self diagnosis that mm. you can feel. So if if it, go back to the car analogy, if you front end starts, if you start to vibrate the car a little bit, well, you automatically know that you got to go get your car aligned, right? Or you're going to destroy the car. If we start having a little back pain, we just going to ignore it or sit that like we don't, we never really listen to the body. And then in the athletic world, you know, you got to push through that stuff or you label it as a wuss or mm -hmm. something like that. So it's like, you know, that, that fight, fight. What we talked about earlier when you said, and I thought that was great was it's work. Hard work, it, that, that, that description shouldn't even be in there. It's kind of like I always say, like, why are we even talking injury prevention? Like, we're not designed to be injured. We created injury in our bodies, and, unless a truck hits you or something mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, listening to the body is what he means by that, that you know, it's, it's like it's telling you all the time. That's the wisdom. You know, most people label wisdom as 
going to school and learning and then you you go through all of these experiences and things like that and you become a wise person. Well, the human body's been in existence forever. That C feels been in existence forever. So when we stop ignoring that for aesthetic value, for um, man, I got these shoes. You know, I gotta wear Jordans, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I, my and I know better too. I still do it, you know. But it, but it's like that's the things that he's talking about. That's mm. the wisdom that we ignore. Can, it, we we value yeah. other things. You know, Mark, you were uh, get uh, you know giving us a lot of information about how you manage your days, and, and you talked about these long walks that you're doing. And uh, you know, me, Bam, and we got a whole hiking crew. We do about. 100 to 200 hiking miles. Sometimes it's loop trails, sometimes it's day trails, and then and then we walk about 700 miles a, a year. But the wisdom is this. If you do a 10 mile walk, and you wake up the next day and one foot is a little more sore than the other, that's telling you that you're doing something on one side a little bit too much. Mm. To make sense a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Um, what I wanna point out too that I think is great that you guys have done, and I saw some uh, video inside your gym where you kind of have like a wall of shame. You got the Woda crew, all the worst movements, mm -hmm. um, people that are uh, not not practicing some of the things that you guys have learned. But I love the fact that it, I know a lot of I know a lot of your information comes from uh, you guys gathering information over the years, observing other people, observing what some coaches do well. Um, going through your own trial and error with your own body. But then on top of that, which I find the most compelling is that you studied some of the greatest athletes. And I think that's a really interesting thing because a lot of people will say, Hey, never mind what the greatest people <laughs> of all time have done because they're special. Yep. And I like what you were saying about your injuries when you were young, how you always thought there was something wrong with that. I've always felt the same way too. Mm -hmm. And coaches are like, no, no, that's normal. When yep. you're pushing the envelope, that's what happens. Yeah. You're going to redline. That's what you always hear. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, not everybody redlines. And then the only the only answer we ever get from anybody is like, well, these you know these guys are genetically superior. Yes. That's mm -hmm. all you ever hear. I love the fact that you guys have broken it down. You've yeah. looked at the greatest of all time. You look at the way these guys move, and you're like, well, there's a lot of commonality between these people. Mm -hmm. We see people do this uh, with business, and they mm -hmm. talk about how to be successful. And you're like, here's the 14 rules. You know, here's yeah. the things. Uh, someone like Jordan Peterson writes a book, mm -hmm. and he's got the 12 rules of life. And we see it time and time again where people have broken down things from our past and said, hey, here's a recipe. This is going to work great. They sell millions of book, books. They're successful too. A lot of people that read the books – those people are successful too. But for some reason in athletics, you don't really see this for some reason. I, I, and I don't know why. I'm kind of baffled by it. Um, what, what you see is what we call a storyboard. So it is that 12-point evaluation, right? So the 12-point eval is our virtual book that we wrote. So that storyboard is taking you through the pre-movement fundamentals, which are your columns, your, your back chain dominance, and your inside ankle bone high suppleness, right? So you have to have those three pre-movements first. When, when we lay it out for an athlete or we lay it out for general pop, everybody sees that, that, that board, right? So we take them through these phases and then we show them their video, which takes them through the phases too. Yeah, you can see it up on the board right now. So what you're seeing right there is the columns, right? So straight feet, inside ankle bone high, level ankles, level knees, level hips, level shoulders. Everything stacks properly, and gravity can't destroy the body. Just in your stance, if those gyros that we talked about in the gym are constantly decompressed and l being loaded properly. And what's that? Right? From so the, the ankle, so it's, it's ankle, knee, hip. It's shoulder. A, correct. Now the knees are hinged, so the yep. knees allowed to go outside into the squat and things like that. You you want that ankle and that hip to kind of work together, and then it, there's it, your collinear line. Yeah, that's mm. the box that he was talking mm -hmm. about out on the, on the turf. What you saw with the baby was is the baby travels in that in that column, so they'll stay inside of the math as they move through space. Mm. The super athletes were always in the columns, and you know. It's, yeah, it's Ed, all right there for yeah, you. Some of the people you're looking at are like Ed Reed, Jordan. You're studying the movement patterns of babies. Mm -hmm. It's the same I've, as the baby, yeah. Yeah, I find it really interesting that like intuitively, you know, we just are moving the right way, but then we're probably, uh, I guess, on programming some of that 
later on in life from technology, from the way that we sit, the way that we rest, right? Is that is that where some of this is yeah. coming from? The yeah. way that we train. Think yeah. of second yeah. grade, right? Yeah. You're yeah. in second grade and you now you got a, a box shoe in, shoe on you. <laughs> you're sitting in a desk and now you're sitting at that desk for eight hours a day. So it's almost like someone wrote a recipe of <laughs> yeah. like how to unravel other things. Correct. Natural, and, and Rick, why don't you talk about um, reductionist uh, theory and, and how it relates to all this? Because that's really what, what, what's just come down to, which mm. is, we got a we got a foot guy now. We got a hip guy. Uh, yeah, we got a yeah. we got right. a spine guy. Right, like what, right. what Goat is trying to do, and you guys kept hitting on this yesterday. Like, wow, this is a system, you know. And, and everybody right now in the in the fitness industry or in the you know corrective industry, the physical therapy industry, it's everybody's in a trench. I just look at the foot. I just look at the knee. I just look at the hip. What those a, a cadaver walks, science? A right. cadaver science, right? So what you're looking at um, when you see these different modalities is you're looking at the wrong blueprint. That's what Goda did different is that to find that innate blueprint, we have to look at certain people, right? We have to look at those that are most durable. The problem that has set into the training industry is that the blueprint that they started with is really a cadaver science blueprint. Like we talked about yesterday, you got a body on a table, you have somebody else taking that foot, and now they're creating what they are calling ranges of motion or movement. Oh, this is dorsiflexion. Yeah, this is plantar. You got your pronation, your but supination. But there's nothing attached to that because there's no there's brain no, involved. There's and then no once you turn on the tape, open chain. once Bullseye. you turn on the tape, that, that doesn't happen. There is no supination because nothing in the organic world could move one plane, one range. You're not just moving on the sagittal half a range. You're not just moving on the frontal half a range. You're putting those three planes together to create that curve, to create that spiral. That's the blueprint of forward movement. So we had to get a new map to show the world so that people could see that these ranges that they think they're training, the hip don't flex and extend. It's really a hurricane energy wave, just like you would see in all of nature. So the big piece here is getting everybody out of the trench, making it more of a system sort of macro viewpoint, 40,000 view looking in on it and seeing how it sort of fractals or mirrors to everything else in nature. And you see that there is an innate blueprint going back to how the baby moves, going back to the embryological development. And then what Gilly did with not just looking at Michael Jordan, not just looking at Usain Bolt, but Ida Keeling and Hurricane Hawkins are just as important to the study as Michael Jordan. The crawling baby just as important as Michael Jordan, and everybody kind of reflects back around it, and we need that whole population to get a better view of what is the right way, what is the wrong way. And, we can't do that without those groups. And also these people that are in these tribes and stuff, these people yep, that have these ancestral movements where um, they're not really inside much. They're outside a lot. And what you showed the other day um, on the floor in our conference room was amazing. You were like, this is kind of what it would look like, you know, a few hundred years ago. Someone would be sitting this way, and you're sitting crisscross applesauce, and then you you moved uh, forward, and then you were resting on your knees with your, your butt kind of uh, on your hamstrings and mm -hmm. calves. And then you were like, and then I would get up, and then I would go do something. Yep. And you might pick up something heavy here and there, but it wouldn't be that heavy, and it wouldn't be that often. Not you in might, repetition. Yeah, yeah. You, might dra you might drag some stuff. Maybe right. you drag water. Maybe you killed a buffalo, and, and you Cored and it up. some yeah. other tri yeah, tribal people. We always say, it like, up. I look at the inputs kind of like walk, jog, run, walk, jog, run, walk, jog, run, walk, jog, run lift walk jog run walk jog so there you're a forward moving species the, the food's out there mm. i gotta go from point a to point b and then when i'm chilling i'm resting on the ground and that's really it that's what the indigenous have to do in their day to day and if you actually watch how they go to carry something it's not the fireman's carry where you're trying to challenge yourself they're trying to make it as efficient as easy as possible you'll see them bring the tump line in you'll see them transport some way putting it on the body so that they can stay back chain dominant and move that thing with the forward motion mm -hmm. the forward gear that we call goda so the indigenous are in that blueprint they're in that input math constantly they're always resting on the ground the Karubo or the Yanomami, a truly barefoot tribe, they never even put a shoe on the foot. It doesn't mm. even know what it is. They don't know what a chair is. And then the day-to-day -day is going to be based in forward movement. If I have to pick something up, yeah, I pick something up. But I always challenge people with 
how heavy is something that you're actually picking up in your day to day? Like the weight room's built for you mm -hmm. to lift heavy weight, but in your day to day, you're probably not picking up anything that's anywhere close to like 30 to 50 pounds on the regular. And it's, you're not going to pick it up and then slam it back down, pick it up and then slam it back down. You're just going to pick it up and then move about your day. Yeah. On a construction site, even like things are, are usually like less than like 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, they're usually- A machine does the rest. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's very rare that something's over a hundred pounds. And if it is over a hundred mm -hmm. pounds then something else moves it like a machine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I love what you're saying there, and, and um, are there some things, because like modern technology is like here, it and it's away. hard to figure out exactly what to do with it. I would urge parents to push that shit back as much as you can, because once your kid has it, there's kind of no turning back from there. So whatever age you can push some of that stuff back to, that would be great. Do you guys have any um, recommendations for if somebody, if a kid is on a tablet, if they are doing something yeah, like that? Because what on I'm the thinking, ground. well, because what I'm thinking in my head is like, I don't, well, everyone kind of says this about themselves. I don't feel like I'm too bad with my phone, but I'm probably too bad with my phone. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just say this. If you guys just told me, hey, the only way you can use your phone is if you're sitting down crisscross applesauce, I would be on my phone a lot less, and I'd probably be more mobile if I felt like using the phone because I'd be getting up and down off the yeah. ground. I'd have to burn some calories. Yes. I'd have to spend some time in a position that my body doesn't really love. That is what we're saying, Mark. Right. Yeah, but, no, that's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, you watch... Uh, indigenous people like I did for a thousand hours or so and you watch the little kids whittling wood and stuff it's on the ground that's like an iPad he's sitting down there messing with wood for hours at a time but they're not going rogue that's with your wood. halo correct you're playing halo now you're playing yeah. you know Fortnite yeah, they're, just they're not trying on to the walk. ground yeah. they're not trying to walk whittling wood either mm -hmm. like they walk and we, we hear right you know they, they, I, I seen something the other day about some marketing thing where they, all of the top items are put low now because everybody's heads down. So they want them to see. Yeah. They want them to see more ground Have level. Advertising yeah, on like the, floor. The, the, the chip companies in the store fighting for the bottom That's shelf. The, right, right. It was never like that before. Yeah, you know. If you can, if That's you incredible. could get your kid mm. to grab a few extra resting periods of the day to be on the ground, like you won't get that one fell swoop. You won't get everything to be on the ground. But if I if my kid comes home from school and instead of going to the couch to turn on the TV or to go watch film if they're an athlete or to go do their homework, that's a chance that we could now use the ground mm. for that moment that's going to be rest. Will it be comfortable the first time? No, but this is why we have Seiza chairs. We could put a basketball there. There's ways to modify. But if I could start to steal some reps by adding into, yeah, add my, my rest into the equation of movement because it really hasn't been brought into that world yet. If I can start to steal some mobility reps, steal some inside ankle bone high reps by playing a video game inside ankle bone high in a Seiza chair or doing my homework or watching tape, upside down inside ankle bone high and crisscross applesauce, that's going to move that ticker closer to go to. So there's a way to have your, your technology and still keep some of that ancient math inside the system. M Mark, Bam slept in uh, <laughs> a bed last night for the first time in like a year. Where does he usually sleep? In a car? In, in a, yeah. oh, no, a Japanese, uh, a Japanese mat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Low to the ground. My, yeah. I, I instruct all my athletes That's to- That's your camera guy who was here today yeah. who I've never seen a camera guy move quite like that. Before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we try to bring everybody that's a go-to coach into the- Give them a job if, if we can. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It makes it easier. Like here, carry well, the camera. When your mm -hmm. camera guy understands what he's looking for in the foot and ankle Absolutely. complex, it makes a lot of difference. Yeah. But um, one of the, one of the things I try to tell all my athletes is is don't sit at the table and do your homework. Try to sit on your feet in a child rocker position and use a coffee table or an end table or something where you could kind of get that posture up, get that spine long and decompress, get the hips back, sit sit on the feet, which is going to keep you inside ankle bone high, and then just work right there. And it, it helps so much. The ones that do it, we know because when they come back from school, we're not recoding them again. We're just training them. How should we be laying down? Mm. How side we, fetal. Yeah. Side fetal. If you could picture the side fetal position, mm -hmm. double inside ankle bone high, that's your best option for, okay. for, for sleep. Feet almost kind of crossing. Yeah, kind of like sure. cross. Together. It's like think a baby in the womb. Mm -hmm. Baby in the womb and just lay it on the side. That's going to be your. It's going to be your best bet. I've been around for a long time. I've been lifting for 31 years. Um, been pushing big weights for, for a long time. And I haven't really come across 
the information that you guys have. I know that some people will watch some of it and they'll be like, oh, that's what this guy said or that's like, mm-hmm. you guys have pieced it together in a different way. Mm-hmm. And what I was pointing out earlier, uh, you guys are studying the greatest of all time athletes. You're also studying the greatest of all time actions overall. Correct. And looking at uh, the indigenous people and looking at people that uh, don't have the same technology as we have here in the United States. And I got to say, the stuff that you guys put me through, it really lit me up. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I have not had... I've worked out with uh, pro bodybuilders. I've worked out with some of the best powerlifters in the world. I worked out with some of the greatest strongman athletes in the world. And I've gotten my ass kicked plenty of times. These guys are way stronger than me. There's, they're on a completely different mm-hmm. level, even as strong as I've been in my sport. These guys have absolutely destroyed me. But what you guys were showing me gave me a burn in a different way than I've ever really experienced before. I'm trying to like trying to place it and trying to think, like, have I had anything else really – do that to me? And the answer is no. And I was, I was shocked. I, I, I knew that having you guys here would be uh, huge, especially for our audience. I knew it'd be, um, it's, a lot of this stuff is going to be, when people find this stuff, it's going to be revolutionary for a lot of people. It's mm-hmm. going to blow apart their brain. Um, so I knew that it was going to be effective, but I didn't know it was going like, to blow my back apart <laughs> the way, and I mean that in a good way. Like it was a lot of blood flow to the area. Mm-hmm. But you guys just have me like leaning on a wall and I'm like, this, like by the looks of it, because I got that former lifter mentality, I'm like, that shit's lame. Like I ain't Listen, doing, no, I'm not hanging out on one leg, com- leaning yeah. up against the wall. That's <laughs> stupid. You know? Being completely transparent. I said the same shit. Yeah. I'm like, Gilly, this ain't, tra- this ain't strength training, dude. Go back in the corrective studio over there and do the correctives with these dudes. I'm- and what happened is, is, you know, we, I started seeing a pattern of, he would fix them and I would break them. And I'm mm-hmm. like, and, 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 you know, I go back to the story all the time. Jamal Chase come down with a ball in the back of the end zone and had a patella injury. Mm. And I thought he was God. Like he, I, you know, I knew who he was in the eighth grade and he told me he was a high risk of injury. And I'm like, I can't destroy this kid's career. Mm. So I had to look and go total self, you know, accountability and look in the mirror and say, what are you really doing? And then when I took the deep dive and got the iPad and started studying in 2015, 2016, the concepts he gave me, he's like, fast forward five years from now and you're going to be talking to the biggest people in the training industry. Mm. And here we are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, what what you went through today was – uh, a play. Uh, you had to go to this geometry that makes you anti-fragile at the joint capsules for life. That includes all the vertebrae. So you have to go to this geometry, and you realize that you've not, you don't even know what the geometry is, and then that's why it's so you know you struggle with it. Mm-hmm. But um, if you trust this geometry and this ancient wisdom, five years from now you'll get us on this podcast. You'll be even more fired up than you were today <laughs> because you get to do things. I mean, I was. On the, uh, my doctor said, fill out the Medicaid forms. You're out. You can't move no more. You mm. lost your third disc. You're 33 years old. You're done. And I came back from that to where I am now. I play golf four days a week. I do. I just did my 67 sprint triathlon. I've done four half irons. Uh, and we, we backpack one, 200 miles a year. And we walk 700 miles on the golf course. You do whatever the fuck I'm you want. I'm fucking free. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, you can swear. <laughs> no, you can't. Oh, thank God. But you know, I'm free. And you want to be free. Mm. You know, and, and I just met your wife. You want to be free, dog. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I like what you're saying right there, especially about being free. Yeah. Like uh, uh, pain is... Uh, is so restrictive and I think we don't even we don't even think about it but I've been thinking about it more recently because there are things that I'll do in a day where I'm skirting around pain and I'm not Mm -hmm. even really thinking of it I'm not that conscious of it uh just because it's like one of those things like everyone has shit they sweep under the rug right everyone has shit that they uh sweep Thank behind you live with behind the yeah. refrigerator you know yeah. and just hey, oh, well, <laughs> like when we move one day like that right. shit will be moved or whatever right you just don't you don't think about it you don't care about it that much but i've had a little bit of tendonitis in my knee for i don't know how long um i have a left hip that gives me hell all the time just these little things that just like you said i tend to live with them but now at least it seems like with a lot of the stuff you guys were showing me, I have an ability now to at least work on addressing them. And I've had other tools in the past and I've had great people come here. Uh, ben Patrick has been huge. I have seen improvements in my knee, but I haven't, I haven't completely gotten rid of the pain. So I'm still in search. I'm still seeking. How do you feel today? 
I feel great with a lot mm-hmm. of stuff that we did, especially yesterday. So I got to say that my hip, because it's like a, a massive block of like concrete, mm-hmm. that concrete came back, you know, like, so yesterday you guys freed up my hip and we mm-hmm. did some stuff. When I woke up this morning, I was actually pretty sore because I don't normally yeah, stretch. Yeah. I'm very new to like stretching and some mobility stuff. And so the hip was like really angry and it went back to where it was and it was like uh, real tight. I came in, did the drills with you guys. It opened back up again. It mm-hmm. took a minute. It took a while to kind of get it back to where it was, but it opened right back yeah. up again. I like I like to use the word decompression instead of stretching. Um, I, I, when my athletes come in or anybody, general pop, the first thing I do is I tell them, let's go get on the ground, decompress. And the reason why I like to use that is, is because we don't like to target the muscle we target the system, right? The so yeah, so when when I go in there and, and somebody's like, well, my calf is tight, I'm like, all right, well, go through your groundwork, tell me how you feel after. And uh, g- get on the wall, you know, when we did the corner hinge where mm-hmm. you're on the wall, it opens up that back chain, right? Typically what happens with um, anybody, and, and, and you know, I use the word athlete a lot because it's more of the, the lane that I'm in, but when I get a guy that comes in and he's got Achilles pain and stuff like that, you know, most times they go to therapy, they treating the Achilles and they doing this and that I open up the hamstring the calf yeah, and all yeah, of that coach, and it'll take coach, the talk pressure about off. how the stretching math is the same as your world class performance man. right yeah so everything's done inside of that like when I put you back down on the ground even though you may be in what you think is a stretch it's it's a closed chain environment because we taking those eight six eight points and we're closing the chain with the knees the foot and stuff like that so even though you're going into a stretch it's still kind of loaded. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not like you're laying on a table and somebody's bending the foot and trying to open the hamstring or the calf up or something like that. So if you keep going to the ground, you're going to get deeper and deeper into that decompression phase. Then we train you inside of the decompression phase and you stay there. Right. Because neurologically, mm-hmm. your body's only going to know that behavior. So we go back to the behavior, right? Yep. If the behavior is always back chain in the exercise and it's always back chain in the resting, then it's and it's always back chain in the decompression, then guess who you're going to be? Yeah. You're you going to be Mark, a back chain dominant person. If I could tell your followers anything, y- you have this one life to live and you don't want to take any steps backwards. I heard uh, Justin Gatlin say that. I don't want to take no steps backwards. When you stretching and the transferability of the stretch goes immediately to the way you swing, strike, walk, run, throw, kick, then you wasting no time. Mm. The challenge with some of these old systems and the reason why we've been very angry and we're letting all that go is because <laughs> you're going to yoga and you're doing warrior two inside ankle bone low. You're going to Pilates and you're bracing the core for an hour doing flutter kicks. And it's got no transferability to anything involving real life mm. or the indigenous life of the past, mm-hmm. which is what we need to keep the joints anti-fragile for 105 years. What you got over there, Andrew? I know you're brewing up questions. Uh, I mean, all of this has been so eye-opening. I've told you guys so many times, but I sincerely hope that like when people are listening to Mark right now talk about everything that they understand, they, they can feel the enthusiasm I mean, both of us were shaking, trembling, you know, yeah, going crazy you on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, as soon as we left yesterday, like by the time I like turned that first corner, my phone was ringing. I was like, oh shit, Mark. And we're like yelling at each other how excited <laughs> we are. Yeah. Not even joking. When I, when I hung up the phone, like I had to like turn up like the, uh, the volume. Cause I'm like, why is this stereo so low? And I was like, oh, it's cause I was yelling at Mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> But Andrew, just wait, just wait Dude, uh, until you stand <laughs> Dude, let, let at the <laughs> foot of the water for a sprint triathlon, oh. and you say, "I could do this. I just, I could do this, and I could get to the end and go straight to the beer tent and drink beer without knee pain." The, 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 you know what's bigger than that, and not to cut you off, and and it's 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 like emotional for me, oh, absolutely, because I, my passion is so deep into this shit right now. To hear you speak like that and know that we brought that to the table, Mm -hmm. to know that we gave you that gift, there's not a fucking dollar in the world, there's not a check that you could cut me, to know that I gave you that because you might have kids that you want to play with. You told me out there on the turf that I got a one-year-old that I hold and I coddle and I want to get on the fucking ground with them. 
and you have that freedom to do that now. Mm-hmm. Somewhere along the line, no matter what it is, no no point figures or nothing, that fucking birthright was taken from you, and you got it back now. Absolutely. That is fucking powerful. Yes, and that's what I was going to say, that, that the start of that race for me is holding my son and then just literally getting down That's on the right. ground yeah, and then right. you know, crisscross applesauce, whatever you it may be. got your goals. Uh, one of the poses and that sort of thing. But you just said something I wanted to bring up. You said it's my birthright. That's right. When you, you said it yesterday, I was just like, oh shit, it's my, yeah. bir- it's my birthright to be able to put my palms on the floor in yes. front of me. I'm getting the chills right now thinking so, about that. Yeah. And I, I've lost that birthright, but I'm getting it back now. Think, think about this and think about where our drive and our passion comes from. A lot of people take what we do and they take it the wrong way. And guess what? We do get out of line sometimes and we do act a certain way. But when somebody's sitting there and you immediately trying to argue and debunk what I'm saying on Instagram and you <laughs> fucking ain't never gotten a child rocker position, yes. don't come to the table with me because I'm a poke holes <laughs> And every fucking thing yeah. that you got to say because I want you to play with your child. See, all you did was you just poured some gasoline on my shit. Yeah. When I go back home, I'm fucking shit up. You Let's better believe go. that. Yes. It's on and popping now. Yeah. Yep. Them kids are going to listen to this show. My kids that go in my gym, they got fucking faith in me. They believe in me because I've been protecting their body for a long time. Mm. We got a guy that just popped an Achilles mm. that we gave him two years. Two years on a ruptured Achilles and it finally gave out, but he made $3 million in the league. Mm. He went from the fucking practice squad to, to starting and being the most efficient, efficient line, Ike Bodega with the Buffalo Bills. Two years. His family set for life. Mm. Nobody could ever give him that. Well, and then the other thing about the athlete, I can <clears throat> speak on that from being a former athlete, is that I just want to trust the coach. Like, mm. I want good, I want to know where I stand. I want good information. When Ike shows up, he knows where he stands. He now knows where the injury can happen. He now knows how to try to stop that as much as we can. I went through so many years where I'm like, dude, what do I do next? Mm-hmm. What's the next book I got to buy? What's the next YouTube video I got I mm-hmm. to watch to try to figure out maybe some little piece of this where now we can give the education back to the athlete. We can be upfront with them. We can talk to the parents and say, look, your child's at risk over here. You're not in the clear. You got to fight to get this back. But now you know. Now you can now at least take power back. Like Andrew's saying, I can have power over my back pain. I can have power over this compression, over this WOTA that I know I'm going to get inputs. We know I'm going to fly back to Ohio tomorrow and I'm going to get off that plane. I'm like, oh man, I got to get back to the ground. But now I know where it used to just be, you'd fly, then you'd sit, then you'd sit some more, then you do some, and then the next thing you know, you're in a completely weird space that you can't get out of because you don't have a blueprint. It's like you're in Cleveland and you got the map of Detroit. The world's in this, they're in Cleveland, but they got the map of Detroit. And we're like, guys, we got the wrong wrong map. We've got to use this map. What's that map you got over there? Well, we just got it from the most durable humans on the planet. People that didn't fall apart, they move like this. People that fall apart, they move like that. It's literally that simple. And all we did with you guys is we moved you closer to what moving well Mm -hmm. looks like, moving durable looks like. And you guys were like, whoa, what's this? Mm -hmm. But it explained why in the assessments, all those movement errors were all hot spots for injuries. Mm-hmm. Everything that we call out, hey, you got inside ankle bone low here. How's that left hip? Yeah, it fucking sucks. Your head's not getting <laughs> in your right column. What's going on with that right knee? Yeah, it hurts. So now as an athlete, when I had my first assessment with these guys, I'm like, the 10 years of trying to figure out what's wrong with my back, what's wrong with my left hip, why I can't drive the ball down the field, it just got answered in 20 seconds. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on here? We got to give it back. And, you got to give Mark, it back to the next generation. Y'all need, y'all need us. Well, and the endurance athletes too, because um, the ultra guys and the marathon mm. people—if they run in inside ankle bone low, if there's an error in the movement, they tear they, they tear meniscus, they tear cartilage in the hip. But you guys need us the most because <laughs> y'all playing outside the blueprint to enjoy this thing called powerlifting and mm-hmm. all. So y'all have to be goda, and so you can go do your lifts because this is what you love to do, right. you yeah. know? Some people are gonna put on in bat suits and they're gonna jump off, off the cliffs. It's just, it, it is what it is. So you gotta be go to more than me. Anybody, yeah. Cause you're gonna lift, I'm just going to play golf. Lifters, yeah. CrossFitters, <laughs> those guys, they, they need this bad. And you know, I, the, the CrossFit people that come in to me are, like I said, I got Jody Kennedy, the strong woman that I worked with before. Those, those people that come in and they get to meet us and do the work and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I get it. Like you, you know what I'm saying? And, and listen, we regular guys, but like I said, man, 
Don't get me fired up. <laughs> fucking take this sword. No, dude, get him fired up. I need Gary <laughs> swinging a samurai sword by the end of this thing. I was telling Andrew yesterday, uh, we were talking about, you know, him, you know, working on getting out of back pain and trusting in this system. <laughs> Andrew, and, it's over. It's checkmate. And You hang and, out uh, with us for six months, you'll never have back pain again in your life. And I'm I so told grateful. him that his new coach is his son. I said, mm -hmm. so watch what yep. your son does. He'll yep. teach yeah. you how to, yep. everything you need there to know. Go. Lay down on the ground with him. Yep. If he's walking or crawling or he moves this way or that way, just move with him. Yeah, yep. it was funny. So like before, uh, this was, I think, just late last week, I was watching my son because he's, he's little fucker's taking off now. Like yeah. He's fast. Yeah. Like yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. take your eye off of him. So uh, I was watching him and as he's moving, I'm like, it looks like he's swimming because, yes. because that, that back leg right, that's is why doing they call this. It a crawl, that's why they call it a crawl stroke. And freestyle. Now yeah. after hanging out with you guys, I'm like, Oh, like that's it, how you're supposed to be walking. He's been just sending send you messages yeah. the entire yeah. time. He's just like, Dad, this is why your back sucks. Swimming, bro. just crawling in the water. Yeah, it's that yeah. same pattern. You know, it's it's everything that, hey, that we're what, talking what, about. What you told that dude the other day? We did a we did a, a a video thing the other day, and the guy's like, "Hey, I think my two year old's inside ankle bone low." And Ricky pops up off the chair. Yeah. And he's like, "Let the little fucker's hand go when you're walking with him." Yeah, yeah. First <laughs> off, stop taking him outside yeah. the pattern because everybody does that. They they hold a hand, and the kids like, "Yeah, yeah you like this." to the kid you're messing with, are you trying to stand your kid up I mean these are oh, things that are funny. so innocent as yeah. parents that you love and you don't even know you're you're doing these things like mm. you want to you want your kid to look cute for the picture so you put a, a, a you know a cool shoe on them and you don't think about their brain does not want that shoe like Gary said kids are taking the shoes off and they're throwing them kids are sitting in chairs in the same floor resting postures mm. even though you sit them down their butt we had a video we just sent out a, a little while ago where someone was trying to set their baby down on its feet to stand uh, and it kept going into Seiza. Yeah. Kept going uh, into Seiza. Yeah. Kept going into Seiza. It didn't want to. We are doing things unknowingly out of love, but are actually pulling our children closer to Woda. Stuff like grabbing a hand when they're walking, you're going to mess them up. Grabbing two hands and trying to get them off the ground too soon, you're going to mess them up. Putting them in a bouncy chair or a bouncy seat, you're going to mess them up. Much like what was good for you guys was mm -hmm. back on the ground, that's good for your children. Yeah. Keep your children on the ground. Keep them barefoot. Let them crawl for as long as they can. How long did Swaggy P crawl for? Yeah. 20 months. 20 well, months. So you, you just burn the pattern deep yeah. into the system. If you could let your child grow up Goda and keep them Goda through adolescence, just like it's really hard to recode a Woda because they're so far gone, it's really hard to decode a Goda yeah. because it's so locked in. That's like a Michael Jordan where he doesn't touch a weight until age 30 or so where he's in his late 20s and he's trying to get past the Pistons. And then even then, like we talked about yesterday, it's mostly just hypertrophy trying to get the mm -hmm. upper body to get a little more swole, but he locked in the go to pattern. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be more durable. He's going to be able to play at a bigger body size. Everybody said when Jordan came in, I oh, ain't big enough. I think he was big enough. Why mm. was that? What was his advantage? Why does his movement look different than everybody else? Why does Ed Reed look a certain way? Why does Randy Moss look a certain mm. way? And everybody just keeps saying it's outliers. We've got the video proof to say it's not outliers because mm -hmm. my son Mickey crawled in the same pattern that Randy Moss runs in. And he's moving in the same pattern that Ed Reed. Now you got to take that pattern and layer skill into it and layer the sport into it. And then you can go ahead and you can become a great athlete. But you take the pattern from them, you're going to rob them. And, and, I'll, and I'll say this because um, we still can't get the answer to why unexplained joint repairs and replacement is growing at 15%. Mm. Nobody will tell me anything that makes any sense that everybody who gets a joint replacement is a woda. And I've been to the, we have an orthopedic that works out with us every morning. And I said, do this. Cause before my dad died, I had to take him to the uh, to orthopedic and I'd, and I'd sit by the door with my camera and everybody that came in with a cane, woda. And then it would be like two hours before my dad got out. No godas walked in mm. ever. Ever. Cause they don't show. And then when you see a goda at 90, and you say, hey, uh, you ever had any pain? They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, yeah. Ever, you ever wonder why, you know, the, 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 great, the great ones don't really get hurt that often. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember uh, like Barry Sanders. Like it was mm -hmm. like rare for Barry Sanders to be, I think he had like, I think he missed like one game because he had a like busted rib. I mean. Yeah. But there's a lot. Ricky yeah. Henderson. Yeah. Babe yeah. Ruth. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of guys, right? Go Looking at Kittle right here. Yeah. yeah I, Kittle, Kittle um, he came in, me and Rick, 
had the opportunity to go up there to the ranch and work with him and a few of the um the tight ends that they had at tight end U. And uh they they building this this whole like ranch type style thing with a barn as a training facility and got a couple of little an things that were insane athlete. It's, he is, he, is oh, it, now he had the um at week one he got stepped on on a calf mm. and uh it went down in week three as a, a calf injury or something right. like that. But he it was just somebody stepped on him when he was coming up trying to get up from the ground and they couldn't get the swelling out so he went on the IR but if you look at him now this is a recent more of a recent photo you could see him living in the shape like mm. we see him straight feet inside ankle bone high mm. he's doing two go to workouts a day he's starting to get the pattern back mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying you're starting to see it again so he's he's seems to be all in uh, you yep. know as far as we know his dad and his sister are all in on the, on the whole thing and um it's, it, it's dude, for the pro athlete it's really the the, the toughest recode because <clears throat> you have to compete mm -hmm. while you're trying to change patterns like we told you guys man if you could shut it down for three weeks or even three months that'd be great like when Ike showed up, we don't have time for that. So we're yeah. trying to to fix WOTA as they're still getting WOTA inputs. And that's why it's so important and crucial for the pro athletes out there. Like you need that groundwork routine to keep you injury you know, free during the season as best as you possibly can to try to start to move that needle closer to GOTA. And it's not, it doesn't have to be something that feels like it's a ton of time out of your day. Like we talked about, if you just get back to the ground for five to 10 minutes in the morning, it's powerful. I mean, you guys sat in the wall for 20 seconds and you're already cooked. So mm -hmm, you don't mm -hmm. need a ton of time under tension if you're in the right spaces because every second you're sitting there feels like work because it really is. So there's no time wasted. You can start to kind of build up that pattern over time and you feel better as you go. Mm -hmm. Can the, we can we like just like go back and like slow things down a because some people are just listening to this, so they can't mm -hmm. see some of the visuals. But um, like you, you're saying, inside ankle bone, high and low. Mm -hmm. Can we explain why high is more advantageous wow. and why, can, why can, low be, is just kind of like the kiss of death for an be, athlete? Before you, Ricky goes, because Ricky's very articulate at this kind of stuff, I can I can tell you, um, y your body, when you put clothes on, will give you clues. So one of the clues, if you're looking at this picture is when you put on a pair of socks and it wraps around the lower leg, it's going to sit on the pattern of your inside ankle bone high and inside ankle bone low. So look at MJ's sock line and tell me what mm. side is higher. Mm. Inside. Right. Yep. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, I mean, like, that's a, no, that's a great segue because you're looking at, I'll tell people, look at the lace line, tongue line, sock line. Like, where is it trending? What area of the foot is starting to hold that pressure? So at the base of this, at these two columns, the two sides of the body that are lined with ball and socket technology, you have this platform, this foot. And it's a half dome structure that's sloping to the outside corner. So it's an arch. The inside of the foot, think of it as a cliff. So if you build that arch up high, you don't want to surf over the outside or over the cliff. So you want to be funneling pressure down and out to the outside corner of the foot so that the dome, the half dome arch stays intact as you land. Because that ankle, that, that ankle bone socket that's sitting right behind the tongue of the shoe that thing is sitting and plugged into the platform that is the foot. So now if my foot touches down and I don't stay inside ankle bone high, I collapse that foot, I take that ball and socket of the ankle and I take it with it. But guess what? The hips attach, the spines attach, everything goes down and in. So people that are inside ankle bone low are experiencing shoulder trouble. Well, why is that? The whole column is being suffocated down and in because the platforms at the base are dipping inward. They're not holding their integrity. They're not holding that half dome structure. And you're never letting that ankle truly slot into what would be the bow and then would be the corner. So you're never able to stay decompressed because you've lost that decompressed sort of shape or action at the foot level. So inside ankle bone high sets the stage, inside ankle bone low sets the stage, but it sets the stage for woe. I'd like to also point out, it's very common uh, in powerlifting and very common um, with uh, CrossFit athletes and people that do Olympic lifting where the knees cave in, but it's not necessarily just your knees. It actually usually is a lot of times it comes from the hip and it's also the feet. So that the ankle bone is collapsing uh, as well as the knees. So you'll hear a coach say knees out. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't really 
your knees can't be driven out by your knees. Your knees can be more driven out by your hips yes. and by the placement <clears throat> and what you do with your feet. So what you guys are talking about is putting that pressure on the outside of the feet. And uh, you, a lot of the training, we'll get to this in a moment, a lot of the training that you guys, or all the training you guys do is uh, off of your heels, which I think is very is very smart. But it's, it's important that people understand your knees will collapse inward it's sort of a default lazy position the body wants to go to when something is a little bit too heavy for you. And the like the uh, leverages are changing a lot. But you would still be stronger if you could still keep that knee kind of bowing, as you guys talk about that building that bow. You'd still be stronger if you could maintain that outward knee position. I think what happens, though, is over time that you're reinforcing these bad positions over and over again most oftentimes, the biggest mistake I see with people in strength training is, oddly enough, they just train too heavy too often. The mm -hmm. weights that they're mm -hmm. using are not giving them the correct input. Mm -hmm. The weights don't have to be uh, insanely difficult. They just need to be a little tougher than last time. And at a certain point, your luck runs out even with that, and you got to restart mm -hmm. and rebuild. Yeah. The Russian uh, guy that we have here, Andrei Milanichev, mm -hmm. uh, who holds some all-time world records in powerlifting, one of the reasons why he was able to build so much strength is because all of us would watch him do a workout and we would be like, that's it. <laughs> Especially if it's like week one of a training yeah. block. Week two, same thing. Maybe by week six, now we're like, oh, shit, okay, that guy's using some weight. But in week six, the weight would move the same as in week one. He mm -hmm. was impeccable with the form and technique. Very, very rare for him to have any breakdowns. And if there was going to be a breakdown, it might just be in a competition and it wouldn't be in training. So so go back to you just answered a big you just answered a lot of the, the whole thing is is he went in there, he took quality over quantity. Absolutely. And he put it to use and he made it perfect, right? It's the same thing with Gota. We we were perfect. And then like Bam was explaining out on the floor earlier, it's an eight, it's in there. We go back in there and we give you them perfect reps again. And it don't have to be many, but we're going to take you to failure. Failure inside of a perfect rep every single time brings back that pattern a lot quicker. But it's the same thing that he does. He's just basically making sure he could keep lifting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's doing enough <clears throat> to maintain and get a little bit stronger. That's the same way we would take you, a, a normal athlete, through um, a recode is we would start at that base of the pyramid where it's a lot of groundwork, <clears throat> it's a lot of resting work, it's a lot of decompression work. As you move up that pyramid, you'll start to see more fluidity, more of the traveling drills that we got to today where you start to see a sled moving around. You start to see a landmine moving around. So you progress the athlete through those different stages and you let their nervous system adjust, you get better results. And like we said, don't waterboard their nervous system. Now we kind of waterboarded your guys' mm. brains as far as seeing the math yesterday. The, when we went to the to the mats, mm. it was very sm slow, it was controlled, it was more of a spoon feed. So we want to spoon feed the nervous system to get better results so that it can adjust properly. I think a lot of people, like you said, they go in, whether they're trying to lift or be better movers, they just go all in right away and they don't let the body slowly adjust or change pattern think think about this I, i'd love to eval andre and, and i mean um the the big lift yeah yeah andre yeah up, yeah man. let you know let rick do if he we could get some yeah, video here, on him yeah. yeah we could get some video on him and see because i'd like to see his foot and ankle complex the, the bottom line is is if you walk in inside ankle bone low then you're not going to be your max strength mm -hmm. when you put your feet straight when your squat went up is you probably took that inside ankle bone a little bit higher mm -hmm. we know that in the performance setting in the training side of it the more inside ankle bone high i get you the more of a bow that you set and we use the elasticity of the body to create almost like a sling, then you get more explosive, what you happened, get faster, what happened, and you get stronger in the process. What happened for me was is I would start to shove my knees out uh, so far that my knee would get kind of over or at least kind of on top of my ankle. And so my foot would would roll out a little bit rather yeah. than rather than mm -hmm. rolling in. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely correct, 100%. I... Uh, I actually used to have my stance a little wider and it was too wide because I couldn't get my knee out to where I needed it to. And my knee would cave in. As we pointed out earlier, mm -hmm. it wasn't really my knee. It's, it happens at the foot and it happens from losing strength and losing control at the hip. So I brought the uh, stance in a tiny bit and I always felt like the most optimal squat for me was for me to really push my knee out and make sure that it got even with the ankle. And that would kind of... Um, 
uh, almost be like a, a bird's like claw on the ground. It's good instincts. You know what I mean? Like, it, like yeah, like I'm trying to pick something up with mm -hmm. my feet. Mm -hmm. And my feet actually became uh, really strong from that. I remember after workouts, my feet would kind of hurt, but not in a way of like uh, pain, just like muscular. I was like, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. And my feet actually grew. I had to get yep. bigger and bigger yep. shoes over mm -hmm. a period of yep. time. My feet grew like like two sizes during my powerlifting career. And I was just thought it was like, because I was getting bigger and fatter, which may have been some of the case, but my foot actually got muscular from that. I, I, I got a point for you, Mark, because I, I like this Russian analogy. Guy does a perfect rep with lightweight, then another rep, and then he builds. And it's the perfect rep, which is what we want, right? Whether we're a power lifter or a, mm -hmm. a figure skater. Baseball. Swing. So yeah. one of the challenges I had in the early days when I had to walk away from cadaver science to find the mapping system was... I would hear from these doctors that everybody could walk different, mm -hmm. that the human species, everybody's got a different gait. And, you know, I just got lucky one day, and I, I don't know if it was the Zoe or the Karubu, but this documentary person had, was at the edge of like a field, and they were inside the woods, and they walked out the entire tribe. And the women and children came first, and then the men came in behind. And to watch a tribe of people move just like a flock of birds, or, or, mm. or a group of animals or wolves, everybody or the big cat, everybody's using the same mathematics. Their foots come down the same way. The entire vortex above the foot complex is moving the exact same way. That's the perfect rep. And then, you know, I just had to come out and call bullshit. Somebody, mm. somebody from an outside place had to come do it, mm. you know, and, I, and I, I just had enough guts to do it and enough money. You know, well, well, well look it, on the table, it's ball and socket, yeah. ball and socket, ball and socket. There's a design. There's a certain way that these things have to work. That's non-negotiable. The Achilles is sewn a certain way, non-negotiable. The foot designed a certain way, non-negotiable. If you just look at the way the Achilles is sewn, you can't load it inside ankle bone low. You're going against the grain. You have to load it into a bow and that goes all the way up the chain. So if you just take a look underneath the hood, you'll see that there's some non-negotiables there based in the mm. math of how the thing's designed. Don't do that. Power Project family, how's it going now on this podcast? Mark Andrew and I, we talk about fasting a lot. We talk about the ketogenic diet and a lot of different types of diets, but Bub's Naturals has a product. They have the collagen protein, which is amazing. They have these apple cider vinegar gummies, which are like crack, but they have, <laughs> they are. These, yeah, they have these MCT oil powder packets that Ah, I've never used to do this, but in the morning I'll wake up and I'll put it in coffee and the smoothness, number one, in terms of the mixing is amazing, but the consistency of my energy through the day because of the MCT oil powder is peak. Andrew. Mm. How's your experience with that? Yeah, no, that's exactly it. It's like the best way to start the day. Uh, you're satiated, you're energized, and you're just ready to crush the day. Uh, so if you guys want to get in on this MCT oil powder, head over to bubsnaturals.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Again, Bubs Naturals promo code Power Project to save twenty percent off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Yeah, that's not so good. that's Greg Odin. Greg Owen. Yeah. So that's his. Another sad. Yeah. I, I couldn't find a, a decent picture. He so, was Zion Williams. He's on that Zion wall. Williams. He's I, on that wall. He's on the wall. I got a, a short clip of it. Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, there right he is. There. Him and Zion. Mm -hmm. Same pattern, same mm -hmm. result, right? Both it's what of them, we saw they're going to last about the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. Right, what do we see in the assessment? Now, if you scoot foot. over a little bit, can you scoot over to Jalen Harris? No, it's a, it's a video. So oh, okay. Just, yeah, there you go. Okay. Stop there. Okay, there so Jalen Harris is a kid that had six years of back pain. He had some kind of catastrophic thing where he got slammed to the ground his 10th grade year or whatever and he was trying to build his way out of it build his way out of it got to Nevada and Nevada was like look man the PT ain't working let's try to inject the back and if that don't work we're gonna have surgery and uh he was a year away from the NBA draft and his dad's like uh man I, I've been watching these guys on social media I'm gonna call this guy Gary with JLS training and I'm gonna try this go to movement stuff out so he hits me up I do eight virtual sessions with him he never misses a practice again shit Eight and virtual it, sessions. He never missed a practice again. He got drafted by the Raptors. And we and, do and, that all, all the, the time. time. And it's not a miracle. And this it's is the other math. thing that people need to understand is about GOAT is a lot of people look at us from an athletic stance, right? Like, oh, they got athletes in there. That's not for me. That is the 
most insane thing that I've ever heard in my life. General Pop should be flocking to the building because if I could take a guy that demands that from his mm -hmm. body and make him comfortable, what can I do to a guy that's just got to get in a car and go to work every day? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we we've we've in the in the PT world in 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 the physical medical side of everything, not the internal medicine things and things like that. In the training industry, we've walked so far away from common sense that it's it's really like again why are we saying injury prevention why why should we have an injury prevention and we use the terminology because it's the language that everybody speaks right but when you sit back from a practical stance and you say what are, what are we doing? Why are we saying that? Why are we taking this kid that's got to stay in his back chain, play basketball? You can see the difference in his stance and how much it changed. Why, why would somebody take, put him on a BOSU ball upside down, <laughs> stand him on one leg, give him two dumbbells, and tell him to balance there and tell him you're going to be a better basketball and player then, if and you then, can do that. And then bring his knee in with yeah, a band. Yeah, and then bring it. <laughs> why, why would somebody fall for that? Now, Throw in the social media effect and fire emojis and all of that stuff mm -hmm. makes them say, oh, that's sexy. Well, then Goda's not sexy and we're going to keep it that way mm -hmm. if that's what it is. But I would argue Goda is sexy. The aesthetics <laughs> of a straight foot heel away is gorgeous. Yeah, right? well, and the now, and now. heel in is disgusting. <laughs> that's another interesting piece about this is just if you take everything out of that, that, that trench concept, just look at somebody walk mm -hmm. with straight feet inside ankle bone high with a heel away. Watch models walk down the runway. They all tend to work in that same head in the column, feet straight, yeah. inside ankle bone high heel. Way. Why? It looks sexier. It doesn't look sexy to have your hips push forward, your inside ankle bones low, and you're waddling with a crooked foot. It mm. doesn't look good. That's back to that wisdom that we were speaking on earlier. Like some of the people that get go to the, the, the quickest are people that have no skin in the game. They don't know anything about it. They don't care. I show them two pictures and they're like, yeah, the one on the left. Mm -hmm. That's the one we got to go with. Mm -hmm. It just looks better. It's common sense when it gets to a certain point. If it gets over complicated with supination, pronation, cadaver science, well, I need to know all these vocab words. I need to know each individual muscle when that's nonsense because everything's just one system. It's the same compounds. It's recycled in different ways to make different stuff. You see that this is just a mm -hmm. system. It's a hurricane. Came yeah. moving around the corner. I can't break it up. I don't do it the proper service by doing that. Like Gary said, you've got to pay homage to nature. You got to pay homage to the systems that nature built. You know, we make we make simple statements sometimes that are powerful, and, and one that we always make is, "Well, how did Jackie Robinson do it without cadaver science? How did Jesse Owens do it without cadaver science? How did Babe Ruth do it without cadaver science? How did the Carubo do it without cadaver science?" I mean, yeah. Hey, Andrew, does mm -hmm. um, if you go a little bit, you had went to the part where the baby was crawling. Yeah, yeah. If you move through that a little bit, and I kind of show you um, so you see, not that it's a, it's a little bit before that. It's oh, going to be in the columns. Yeah, that's the back chain dominant side of it. I'll, um, find, I'll find it. Yeah, to, uh, and then I want to show you something that further down when you get into there's a, a phase of it where we release energy or whatever. Duh, it's my it's my son again, and he's pushing. A, a big uh, Crayola box or something. Yeah. That's the crawl pattern. So you see the heel away in the crawl that you saw is the same, the heel away in the crawl. There's going to be a heel away in the baby uh, in that area somewhere. But what he's doing, it is your sled push. And that's, mm -hmm. Mark, one of the things that we talked about before you was like, man, I'm trying to push this sled. It's right behind Gilly's elbow right there. But I'm trying to push this sled the same way that that your guys are pushing and I can't do it. My little boy put his hands on that Crayola box at two years old mm -hmm. and he pushed that Crayola box and he would set a bow and his heel mm -hmm. would flash away. As he, he was using the hip technology mm -hmm. and the foot and ankle to actually move it through space. So if that's how he moves it through space, then putting a little weight on that sled Mm. Will add to because we don't we don't lift athletes and, and humans we do lift some stuff but we move weight mm. more than we do lifting it. What's that input game? You yeah. know, it, it, powerlifting and Olympic lifting is its own sport. And it should be treated as such. The same way y'all don't shoot hoops, y'all don't do cone drills to get ready for your game or your meet. We don't need to be doing deadlifts to get ready to not do deadlifts. You know, when you get to the court, when you get to the field, it's all locomotive based. It's all back chain dominant. There's no weights to pick up. I joke with the old lineman. I say the only lifting rep you do in a game is if you get beat. Now you got to pick up your quarterback mm. off the ground because yeah. you just got sacked. Everything else is supposed to be back chain dominant inside ankle bone high. So 
strength has been defined as, well, it's my numbers on my bench. And what we're saying, no, is strength is the pattern of movement. So like Bam told you where he gained 15 pounds just from doing you know workouts with nothing more than a 25 pound plate, it's because he's building strength in a pattern. If I'm using the go-to pattern, the biggest muscles, because we're default, our balance is 95.5, something like that, 90.10, where it's forward locomotion to the reverse lift. If that's the case, then there's a reason why the back muscles are, are large, the glute is huge, the hamstrings are huge. If you pay homage to the innate pattern mm. and the design, the biggest muscles get bigger. I you get stronger. Hey, hey, Mark, can I get you, give you your next point? Sure. Because I, mm -hmm. I really think we have an opportunity here to make some profound statements. Um, what, what I couldn't understand, another one of these things was, if you watch a, a, a hundred Achilles ruptures or a hundred ACL tears and you say this is the geometry of it and then you watch training match it I couldn't understand why people would want to do that and I, and I still don't I mean you, you, do you understand that concept this is how they all go down mm -hmm. and we're going to train it better Right. Yeah. No, I, agree, I, I agree with that a lot. We were talking a little bit yesterday about uh, like the hamstring injuries, like how many mm -hmm. people blow out hamstrings. And we see it time and time again in the NFL. And it's like, are these guys not doing uh, stiff leg deadlifts, RDLs? Are these guys not doing deadlifts? Are they not practicing cleans and snatches? I, I believe they already are. Yeah. I they've been doing it for 10 years. Yeah, at they've that been doing it probably. since probably high school. Yeah, Nowadays. they do some type of leg curl. <clears throat> they do some sort of glute ham raise. Maybe they do a Nordic or some, mm -hmm. some of these exercises. And, I mean, you could have the strongest hamstring, but if, you're, if your technique is off when you go to move, yes. which it's probably going to be wrong because you're probably reinforcing that uh, in your movement pattern yep. day to day and with – External rest. load, yeah. which makes it even worse. Ricky makes a profound statement about about negative reps, and yeah, if you put that, e yeah, say it. Say everything it. that you just said was from the cadaver science input. Mm -hmm. Every workout you just said was working off of that flex, extend some sort of range that I'm trying to change. So now you're taking this this body, and it's supposed to move in this wave like manner, and you're restricting it to all front chain dominant inputs, all inside ankle bone low inputs, because you're trying to make it move linear, because you're trying to work one plane, one range when it's built to move in a wave like manner. So now, instead of that go to wave, you have this blocky locked up sort of ball and sockets that you try to hurl through space and it's not going to work. And that's why every ACL shred and every Achilles shred goes down the same way because this athlete, and I know from when I was young, the, the personal training, the like, you know, sports specific was just starting to kind of bud. Now it's huge. Mm. Now it's like you, if you, if you want to even have a sniff at D1, you got to be training since your eighth grade. So you picture all those inputs that go into the nervous system. And if you look at all that afferents coming in and if you're building this backlog, and that backlog is what we saw in your guys' assessments, who you truly are when I just ask you to go move through space. So what we try to attack is that backlog with new inputs in. So now we change the afferents, the, input, the inputs coming in to go to inputs. They're not Nordics or any straight line. They're waves. Everything's moving in a wave-like manner off of the pivot point. Now we get enough inputs in, we change the backlog. So now I change the subconscious pattern to go to from WOTA. And then I just put that go to down in any arena they want to work in and I let them go and it's going to show there because the movement will have to switch back to the subconscious, but we've got to go and attack that pattern with inputs. The, that's happening whether you like it or not. Everything you're doing is coding something. We just got to be aware of it from a training standpoint and from a lifestyle standpoint. But the thing he, the, the, the statement you always make, which is profound, is if, if your pattern is WOTA, and everything you do is WOTA. You should be in re injury resistant to to WOTA, right? Because no, in other you, in other words, you're doing is WOTA. So yeah. how did how did yeah. you get hurt, WOTA? Yeah. yeah, if you go inside ankle bone low and tear your ACL, I mean, look look at it like this: Kevin Durant's duck footed inside ankle bone low, and enough reps on that snaps his Achilles. It mm. don't it don't save him. You right. know what I'm saying? You can't strengthen that. You saw you saw Zion shape. You saw the duck footed, the inside ankle bone low, and he's three years in the league, and he's had three surgeries or something like. It's two like surgeries. we showed you guys the other day with the um the, the that recent ACL tear in the in the championship game, mm -hmm. um and and what you saw there, 
with that 4K, that, that high resolution tape, th there's nothing to strengthen there. Because if we just go through it slowly, you'll see that, yeah, where the pressure is laying, it, it's not designed that way. Yeah, the ball like, socket uh, isn't designed that way. Did Bulgarian split squats, it's not going to fix it. No, <laughs> you need a bow. You need to land in a bow. Lunges like, with heavy weights, not, not going to fix, fix it. Like you need the rockers. You need the toe. You need to speak to inside ankle bone high. That sock line, that tongue line, that lace line. If it ain't trending high when you land, you at risk. Because you can lock the that ankle pattern off. that you saw in that Alabama receiver. You saw it in the same Alabama receiver three weeks before that that tore his ACL. So they had two top round draft picks tear the ACL. I got video from their practice. Mm. That they doing inside ankle bone low field work. You got all these special field trainers and all that actually train water, and then they take it to the field and they snap the ACL and their hands up in the ass saying it didn't happen with me. Mm. And I'm saying, man, listen, I'm willing to take whoever you are, bring you into my gym. I don't even want nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't want that kid to lose his hopes and his dreams because I know a lot of times my kids in my area, man, the streets calling for them. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Like New Orleans is is, is a different place. Mm -hmm. Like, and and it's a special place, but it it's different. Like they 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 got a dark side of it. You know that you'll get sucked into, and and it's waiting for some of these kids. It's so one I, bad step away. One of the things you guys. So one of the points you guys are trying to make is that if one of your athletes gets in a compromised position, maybe they get less hurt, or maybe they don't get hurt at all. Absolutely, we got video. But you of can't that. completely, in, especially NFL. I mean, it's, oh, it's a violent game. I mean, you can't completely. No, we can't it. stop yeah. a contact injury. From if, a, if a if a body part takes a direct blow, like a, a, a contact injury to us is some. My knee got wrecked. A body part hit that mm -hmm. knee, right? Like a scud missile. That is what it is. But like we said before, and we've we've got video of it of our athletes getting put either from somebody stepping on them or somebody rolling on them to a vulnerable position, and they'll then shift it to mm. a safe position because the nervous system's been wired that way. Yeah. Like we said, it's got to do what it's told. It's a servant to the environment. There so now is. you go ahead and you mm. see that cut. Uh, yeah, and it's inside so, ankle bone So if low. you could slow that down right there, you're going to see, stop, oh. stop. Go back. See, that's why bit. you gotta watch tape frame by frame. Yeah, he, right here. One stop. Blue. So what he does is immediately you could say, "What did we talk about the whole time out there?" Was loading the column. We kept you in the column the whole time. Remember, Mark? I was like, "Don't go past it. Mm -hmm. Don't go on the inside of it. Stay inside of that column." He sticks that foot out and he tries to load that foot outside of the column. Now that is behavioral. Mm -hmm. I don't care if he was flipped around or anything like that. Inside ankle bone low is going to happen is the behavior. Whereas if he would be an inside ankle bone high, like we'll watch, um, what's uh, DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, D -Hop he's an inside ankle bone high guy. He's 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 got he's pretty good. He's probably like a seven or something like mm -hmm. that. He lands, and when his foot strikes the ground every time, you'll see that ankle bone climb just a little bit. All he needed was just a fractal. Just a little bitty bit to make that knee go up, and he couldn't get it because his heel was stuck in the ground too. And then you'll see the mechanism. He's already screwed because we're watching uh, the championship game. It's uh, Alabama, Georgia, number six, uh, just caught the ball, and he's about to like make this cut. But it looks like he's already screwed because – his toe is starting to go out, so right? Seeing, yeah, yeah, he's way outside of that column too. So he's, he's gonna load. Phase. He's gonna load a valgus position now. If you could go look, edge it up a little, look at tiny the sock bit. line, Mark. Just Stop. look at the sock line. Mm. There it is, inside oh, ankle yeah, bone the low. Sock lines, phew, yes. pointing right down at the ground. Yep, and then he then he goes, and what's gonna happen is the shin gets stuck, and then the the femur tries to. Didn't open. this guy watch tapes of MJ? Going on? <laughs> <laughs> they, hey, they he do what they're told. Yeah, you know, yeah. you do what you're told. You don't know any better. As a you, you got as a college athlete, you're you're lifting. Like it is what it is. That's just the way that things are um, in, in the systems. But that's the in to out that we're talking about, right? If I've got that platform <laughs> that is my foot, and it's now a pivot point. Okay, it's not this foot that supinates, pronates. It's a half dome structure. So the pressure is supposed to slope to the outside corner. Mm. That's my pivot point yeah. that I then spin the ball and sockets around. This cat has yeah. been enough inputs of using the inside corner of the foot and the heel at inside corner as a pivot point, it leads to a moment like this where the ankle's been given that clearance. The nervous system's been given that go-ahead to try to create max neural drive off the inside corner of the foot by spinning the ankle and the hip out. But when you're traveling forward through space and you're trying to move over that pivot point with all that pressure going through the system, the ankle gets locked into place, uh, thigh keeps going. Yeah, and, and I'd like to make a point my belief system as a 56 year old man who's watched probably 20,000 hours of slow motion video 
and coaching like a Joe and and being a part of Bam's Recode, um, I think personally that the non-contact unexplained injury could be a zero tolerance event. Like it could never happen. And then the light contact, we could probably mitigate that to about 20% of the occurrences. And and, and the big running back for uh, New York Giants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was the strongest lifter and the biggest. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, Saquon. And mm-hmm. then somebody jumped on him. And he blew out his knee. A I mean, DB, we too. Call that light, no we call that light contact. There, kind of there's stuff. so many of these cats that they get to the NFL and like they're, they're already so compromised um, from an injury standpoint. Whereas like they should be feeling like they're hitting their sixth gear and they're ready to take off. If we were to able to really do this the right way, we would take the desks out of the schools and we'd have a floor desk mm. so that the kids never lose their go to all the way through their youth and you're training them go to. By the time that kid gets to college, like the pattern's so locked in, mm-hmm. then you're just going through the work. When they get to the NFL, you should see a flock of straight foot inside ankle bone high athletes that no one's going to go inside ankle bone low. Why? Because from the day they were babies until they got to the NFL, it's been an inside ankle bone high input. So you could see a situation where that whole thing gets wiped off the off the, uh, the globe because mm-hmm. you've now changed not only the 10% of the training to now inside ankle bone high, but that other piece of the pie, the larger piece, the lifestyle piece, better shoe choices, better shoe knowledge, better sitting options, right? Now it's like I'm owning 100% of my day in a proper movement pattern. And now I can go about my life, whether you need, to, whether you're Saquon Barkley trying to break a 70 yard run, or you're a lady trying to get from one end of the aisle to the other without back pain, you still got feet, you still got ankles, and they've mm-hmm. got to pay homage mm-hmm. to the old pattern because that is what it is. And everybody has to have this. Andrew said it, this isn't just for athletes. He's like, oh my God, this is for every mm-hmm. body. Mm-hmm. Every body is designed in that same way. It's ball and socket technology. It's coupled motion technology. It's land, air, and sea. Everything fractals out. Nature's yeah. building the same recyclable, durable <laughs> pattern into all its species, but we've just gone the wrong way. And it's only been a short period of time, but we don't know until kind of a few decades go by that, oh shit, the cigarettes are bad. <laughs> now you're like, oh shit, the chairs are bad. Mm. The next piece is going to be like, oh, maybe those lifts aren't what we should be doing with our locomotive athletes because they do carry the same energy signature as the ACL or the Achilles. You were mentioning earlier about the uh, the tribe and the documentary that you saw where everyone's walking the same. Well, I kind of see the walking dead out there. I see like every, <laughs> everyone's like walking the same way, but it's bad. But you know, it's bad, it's yeah. It's well, not 85% good. of the population is probably in back pain. Yeah, there's yeah, there's tons yeah. of pain and tons of reason why they're kind of stuck in those yeah. positions. Yes. Maybe they were previous athletes or maybe they just haven't done much in a really long mm-hmm. time. I find that to be really interesting too. Yeah. Like a lot of folks haven't just really explored what they can do physically in a really long time. They haven't jump, jumped. They haven't thrown anything. They haven't mm-hmm. run. They haven't... They haven't really done much of anything with their physicality, which again, I think is a birthright. And it's something that you should be cautious of. Like losing that kind of uh, knocks back a lot of the traits Mm -hmm. that we have as human beings and disconnects us from like the heart and determination and a lot of the the cool shit that we have. But a lot of people, like when I've seen families, I'll I'll see a family like, uh, you know, at an event or just out at at a, a park or something like that. And I see them walking and they're all walking the same and everyone's all duck footed or everyone's like Mm -hmm. knock kneed or like, what do you guys do? Like, cause, because sometimes you get an athlete, especially like a teenage kid comes to you, he's like 17 and he's like six, four and he's a big overgrown giant, you know, of a kid and the knees are kind of slammed in toes are pointed out. And, you know, it's like, oh, man, I know for me as a coach, it was very difficult. I didn't have the skill set. I didn't know what you I didn't know this stuff that you guys are communicating. That would have been really helpful because for me, I was trying to make that kid. I was trying to squish him into positions that he wasn't really capable of doing. I'm trying to have him do squats like everybody else. And then I watch a squat and I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And then I take him to the deadlift and he can't really even get to the bars. Hamstrings are too tight. Take him to the bench and shit just gets worse and worse. worse. I'll I'll make a statement, but I want Coach to talk about Cardell, Thomas. Um, You know, I've been blasted many a times on social media because it's kind of like the thing I had to do was go out there and take the punishment from you guys. Um, (laughs) But you know they make fun of me for wearing the boat shoes because once I once I, I love those I, kicks, man. I, I got a pair of those. In, yeah. the, in the in the late two thousands, I studied McDougal's work, which is Born to Run. Talked about Tata Umada and the barefoot, and I started putting on these these deck shoes, and I coach right off the deck shoes, and people on social media would make fun of me. So, but I haven't put my sh- my foot in a shoe that binds them mm. in like 
a decade and a yeah, half. This is a slab of rubber with some cloth around it, pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but talk about Cardell. Um, Cardell Thomas is a offensive lineman from the from LSU. And he was called Mr. Pancake in high school. He was, you know, arguably maybe the best offensive lineman ever in high school. Mm -hmm. And he got to LSU and he had a foot injury immediately. Mm -hmm. And the, through the rehab process and all of that stuff and using the end step of the foot, it basically almost turned his foot into like this almost milk dud type shape mm. if you could visualize that with the ankle sitting way on the inside of it so what happens what we see a lot of these people that don't have an arch is the human body's very complex it's very special so we'll see uh, and we just say it's like an extension of the navicular bone or something like that just to kind of give it a name or something because it'll start to form a tissue or something underneath where the ankle is constantly playing, right? So it's not, it's almost like this big firm callus or something like that. So, you know, and, and then unfortunately, there he is right there. <laughs> the body, there he is. look at him. There the body will do wild stuff. Boom. It'll grow, your body will grow like bones and shit. That's You'll have fair. bones on your. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really not fair. But you see his walk. You can see that pattern that Gary's been trying to pull out of it. But that goes back to what we did with. With your guys' feet, where where we see that co that collapsed arch outside the columns and the ankle, you know, diving down and in, yeah. what Gary's got to do is he's got to get them decompressed. And these, yeah. these big guys have to go through that same process. When I, when you you think you had a, a tight hip, like this kid's been sitting with that foot open mm -hmm. on the end step. For, for 10 years, 12 wow. years. You know what I'm saying? And then what they do, listen, and it's unfortunate. Big time college football, you're property now. Like they're going to do everything that they could do to keep you on the field. Nobody's looking from a, well, how can we really fix? They like inject them, get them out there. Inject Next them, get up. them out there. Next man up. Uh, and it's unfortunate, but that's what it is. This kid was special. Now yeah. he, he ended up coming back. Everybody was like, man, what happened to this guy? Now he's he started the last few games and, you know, they got a whole new staff over there so mm. he's gonna have an opportunity yeah. to um to come back he's but a good kid he gives good hugs he's too. a he's a I'm phenomenal a dude, kid it, you know. <laughs> he's a phenomenal kid and it and, and it and it you know it, it pulls at your heartstrings because his mom and his dad they've been bringing him all over trying to find mm. answers and stuff and then he walks in there and he's like this is it mm. You know what I'm saying? This is it. And, and what it, happens with a kid like that when he shows up and he starts lifting some weights? Like people see him dominate on the field, then he goes to do a squat and he can barely squat 225, well, well, and the coaches are up his ass about it, right? Yeah. Well, mm. he squatted yeah. 650 or something oh, shit, like that. Okay. I put him in the single leg wall yeah. sit and he couldn't hold it for six seconds. Mm. Right. That, that goes back it's to not that, transferable. What is strength? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. What is strength? It could be. I mean, you could measure it as a number, but when we actually talk about, well, what are the the patterns and the in the specs of the engine that I want to see on the field? Well, I need to see those bows. So you're actually not strong because in the pattern that, that we need on the field, you're weak. But in the pattern that we need in the weight room, you're a monster mm. because they're two separate things. And they need to be in their own places. Mm -hmm. And if people know that, the people that are in the powerlifting, Olympic lifting space, they could even stay there longer and then possibly Push put, more put, yeah, put off the surgery at the end of it. And then you're going to keep your locomotive athletes right. uh, you know, happy and safe at the same time. So just by the knowledge and the awareness, you can put the parties where they need to be, and then everybody can start to feel good about their own body and what's what they want to do. What's your thought patterns behind somebody having some GOTA, they're moving really well, and they're implementing and utilizing some strength training? Because you guys, uh, strength training that you guys don't normally preach, mm -hmm. but you guys must run into this because these uh, athletes, they must go off and, yep. they and have do to. other stuff because, yeah, it's a requirement. And then some people just want to. Some people just want yeah. to deadlift yeah. Yeah. or squat or whatever it is. So For what sure. do you see with some of those folks? I, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's it could be done differently. It's like it's not, it's one of them things where, if, if it's a locomotive athlete, they don't have to do those things to build strength. You found that out today. Mm -hmm. Like we lit up parts of your body yeah. that or yesterday too that, that wasn't being utilized. Now, when you go back and you say, okay, well, let's put everything in a category. Okay, does he play on his heels? Does he play with duck feet? Does he do all of these things? Well, then what system fits him the best? Mm. Okay, let's go back now and let's go look at a power lifter. Does he use his heels? Yeah. Does he open his feet? 
for different different lifts and stuff. Yeah, do, does is he you know in a you know with his back on a on on a bench and stuff. Yeah, okay. Well, this system is what's applicable for him. Mm. So it's not just about how we develop it. It's about the application side of everything and what fits. Now, the good thing is is that everything locomotion is just go to in the way we develop strength. So if you're a tennis player, baseball player, anybody that moves that travels through space is going to have to be in a locomotive pattern. Any, again, go back to what we talk about, about inputs. If I take and I give that kid power lifting and, and Olympic lifting inputs, and he's a defensive end, eventually he's going to have the soft tissue injury. There's mm-hmm. no way to keep mm-hmm. him safe. The, I think the, the practical way for the athlete, like thinking back on my day-to-day and how could I have done this at, a, at, a, at an Iowa, where, where now I'm, I'm, I have to do these lifts, it is what it is, and we see this with a lot of athletes. What could I have done to kind of counteract that? And that's why we talked to you guys yesterday about capturing that 90%, right, that lifestyle. So that's where you talk about the walk. You mentioned all the, all the walking miles you do. How many steps you said was like 20? Tw- yeah, like 20,000 steps. So 20,000 steps. Those could be 20,000 go to steps. Mm-hmm. Now I go to rest. Blade now, walking. Blade walking. Yes. Mm-hmm. Instead of that athlete sitting at their desk, they now go to the floor. So now that hour of homework or that hour of film study that I spent like this, that's going to actually ruin my hip and my shoulder when I do try to drive that post that I've now recognized on tape. Mm-hmm. We could be on the ground and we could be keeping that that pattern. So the young it's athletes. like chocolate cake when you're on a diet, right? <laughs> the, the young it's athletes. It's going to be a problem. They got to capture the 90%. It's the only way right now. Like Gary's saying, it's not optimal to be going back and forth because I'm still giving that nervous system the go ahead. That's what always, you know, keeps us up at night is I, I'm, if my athlete's getting any sort of inside ankle bone low, it's still alive in that backlog. It's still there. We're trying to wash it all out because it's got nothing to do with their movement. But the best we can do with what we have right now is to try to capture the 90% with their walk and their rest. And then a really clean groundwork routine, like we showed you guys, that's going to target all those big time areas and be something that they could add into their morning and their nighttime routine. It's movement maintenance. It's movement hygiene. You're brushing your teeth. You're combing your hair. You're doing the same thing at the hip and the ankle level. That's giving everybody their best chance. That'd be the same blueprint that I would send off to to, to anybody. Get a groundwork routine, get yourself walking the correct way, change your rest. And then that last 10%, if you do want to go do Olympic lifting and you don't have to go out there and run around, fly around, jump and compete, then I th- you'll probably be okay if you're just walking around in your day to day. But if it's a high level athlete, why even take the risk? Mm. So me, optimally, it's not good. But for right now, that's your best bet. Ta- if you're taking athlete. it a step further is, is there is no, there's not a, an evaluation process out there there's not one one of the things that happened. They, 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 the kid Grant Delpit and Grant Delpit was like my favorite college safety ever. Okay, this kid flew around the ball. I thought he was going to be like the second coming of like a Tyron Matthew or somebody like that. Just drew to the ball phenomenally. He was a, he's had super go to movement patterns, and then he broke down along the way. Right, the college weight room, the specialized training, and all of this stuff, and it turned into a shit show one day on social media. And 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 you know the guy Mo Wells and and he Mo knows what he knows. He's a great speed developer and all of this stuff like that. But he made a a comment in a post and when he said it he said medical cleared him like in other words mm. they gave him to me to train like they said it was okay at IMG to go ahead and execute my program with him so that we know that there's no process out there so if Grant walks in there after being in LSU's weight room for four years and doing WOTA training and he goes out onto the um he goes out to his pro day and Mo gets him and they clear him well Mo's gonna execute his program now whereas if there was some kind of better process where we could go in, do the, the evals, and then it may say because everybody walks in their water, and then they throw them into water workouts, and it makes it worse. You could you could magnify it and make it worse. Whereas if the kid comes in and he's like a water hole up, dude, we're not putting a bar on your back mm-hmm. ever. Not until you get those feet straight and inside ankle bone high, and it's in your behavior. That, that I mean, that would be the only way to even start to think about mm. it from from a perspective of trying to salvage some of the stuff that these kids are doing. But for now, for us, it's all go to it's nothing. I like I like that a lot because um, I mentioned this to you guys yesterday. Uh, when you go to school, they don't teach you how to learn, you know. Mm-hmm. And when you go into the weight room, I think that they feel like they're teaching you how to lift, but they're not. 
no one really teaches you how to move and you should probably learn how to move before you learn how to lift because <laughs> lifting usually requires movement under external load, which probably isn't a smart thing. It kind of reminds me of something like uh, track and field, you know, running, people mm -hmm. sprinting. Um, I've had track athletes in here before and I, I've asked them before, I'm like, do you know how to flex your hamstring? And they're like, I don't know how to flex. I'm like, how, how is that possible? You're a sprinter. You don't know how to flex your calves, your hamstrings. Like you don't, you don't know how to get into them. Like even just having them do some general body awareness movements, having them do a good morning with just a light band around their back, just to feel their glutes and hamstrings are like, I, like they barely knew where they were. I was like, how is this possible? Of course you blew out your hamstring. Like you, you don't have any kinesthetic awareness of your hamstring and what it's supposed to be doing when you're making this uh, contact with the ground. So I think I think you guys are dead on with some of these uh, some of these points. Yeah. Well, we would we assess in slow mo. So the it's slow mo frame, says the slow mo frame, the yeah. slow mo what, tells you you're going to blow out your hamstring. What do you guys think of uh, sports specific training? Probably one of those things that maybe a hot button topic. <laughs> well, it's it's one of those situations like sports specific training. You got to play your sport. Right. That's it. You want to throw the football better? You throw I the see. football. You want more specific training would be practice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about practice. You want, yeah, yeah. you want, you want to be a receiver. You go yeah. run a route. Absolutely. If you're gonna be a receiver, half the half the shit the receivers are doing now with these specialized trainers mm. ain't even receiver work. <laughs> yep, like they're well, not even working the education no. side of it. It's not you even should route be getting anymore. if you're in a D one and you going to a specialized, then they need to look at firing whoever the receiver coach is at that D one. Mm. If he can't get it, there's a route tree that you run. You got to mm -hmm. know that inside and out. Mm -hmm. Now with all of these specialized releases and all of this stuff like that, they've just taken away from the route tree. Meanwhile, the quarterbacks back there getting sacked. Yeah, I you, mean, you know what I'm saying. The, the the main piece there is that like the more tape we've poured over and the more disciplines we see that are sport specific, as you start to look at it and you sift through it, you're like, this is all just go to. Mm. Like it's all it's all optimized under inside ankle bone high back chain dominant. You watch the world's best batters, the world's best pitchers, the world's best quarterbacks, the world's best tennis players. They're all doing the same shit. The world's best offensive lineman, the best running back, the best receiver, the most durable. They're all doing the same stuff. And that goes for volleyball. It could be baseball. It could be tennis. It could be soccer. It's all locomotive. So when we're sitting here as coaches and people would ask us about sports specific or what can I do to, to mimic the mm. weight room, I'm like, look around you. You're in a fucking weight room. You're cozy. You're comfy. You got to choose. When you're on the field, you're in <laughs> hell's kitchen, dude. Mm. You're in it right there. That's the only thing that gives you that experience mm. is being in the middle of the shit and being in the huddle and you just got the wind knocked out of you and you're trying to breathe and you're trying to communicate the play. There's no drill in the weight room for that moment. You got to be that cat that's going to go ahead and move the team down the field. So if you're a basketball player, fucking play basketball. Michael Jordan had a for love of the game clause in his contract that said, I can play basketball wherever and whenever I want. Mm. He played the game constantly. Mm. He played it hard. If you watch him play in those pickup games, he's, he's Michael Jordan. Kids. Yeah. If you're a baseball player, <laughs> go to a park, play baseball, play the game, get into the competitive, uh, the X's and O's of the game. That to me is sports specific training. Sitting there with a well-trained quarterback coach and letting him go over the tape with you, that's sports specific training where you can start to digest the X's and O's. But the underpinnings of what's going on under the hood, it's all back chain dominant inside ankle bone high. That's why we say rockers is good for somebody to get out of pain. It's also good if you need to go be an overhead spike specialist or you got to throw the football. Yeah. It's go to, it's got to be back chain dominant inside ankle bone high because you're now in the locomotive setting you're not in that lifting setting the point I, the point i'd like to make mark is um is it's problematic with the internet that a sport specific training or similar training like that is coming from young kids so here's what you get you get somebody like i don't know if you ever heard of the professor but he's dribbles a lot mm -hmm. and does a lot of cool stuff and he's got everybody going inside ankle bone low and about a, two years ago, he's doing a back step and he tears his Achilles. And I'm like, there's the problem. You got a 28-year-old that has a little knowledge of cadaver science, creating all these new moves, and now you got millions of people buying their programs, and they got no elders. They got no historical reference to, is this going to tear up my hip and knees in 30 years? And it's a problem, you know? I knew you was about to slam something. I knew you had that whole thing going on yeah. right here like that. Dude. But that's the big piece that was, for, for, for me, when I first approached this was, man, like I came from that place of back pain as a young kid, 
And you hear Gilly's story about how he dealt with that in the 20s and 30s and then be able to put that off and to be still durable at his age. That's like we talked about earlier. The elders of Gota are ju- Hurricane Hawkins, Ida Killing, just as important as Michael Jordan and the crawling baby and the Karubo. Because we need to know, does this behavior match up for the long haul? Does it stand the test of time. The more tape you watch, the more people you watch, the elders start to sift through. There's Hurricane mm-hmm. Hawkins right there. There's Hurricane. You see the straight foot. You see the inside ankle bone high. You see the knee. That was three out. years ago. Yeah. That, that was I mean, three years ago. That's not even, you know, it's somewhat 100, recent. 100, then five. 105 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Doing sprints. Well, yeah, well, they, so they don't go that yeah. fast, but for yeah. a five-year-old, they, they <laughs> well, she, she says it in the thing. I do a little running around each day, not a certain amount or a time, just to keep everything going. She knows. When you in the pattern, you in the pattern. Mm. Every step she's taking is in the pattern. Mm-hmm. So she could do it at 102. She just did it at 105. And then, I mean, hey, man, that cardiovascular system yeah, stays right. intact. She might do it at 110. Um, well, Jim you, Jim Wendler, he wrote a book called 531. It was massively popular. Um, one of the things that he said is, because he uh, has a football background, one of the things that he stated, and I thought that this was pretty interesting and I'd like to get your take on it, uh, he said that he believes that athletes should train their upper body a little bit like a bodybuilder so they have some good strength and they have some good size, and they should train the lower body like an athlete. What would you think of, the, of something like that? It's closer to the answer than yeah, I'd, I'd <laughs> rather I'm trying to get you guys to bend a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like it's closer. It's closer to the. Uh, this this is the here's thing what too. You, here's let, what let you me, could do. Let me let me yeah. say something. Because because the and and the bending thing or whatever. Man, Mark, my belief system, Andrew just fucking raised it up too notch. You know what I'm saying? So for me to bend away from Andrew, something. Andrew, goddamn it. Yeah, it's your well, fault, you Andrew. Watch Bam, you watch Bam and you watch the size that he puts on. You watch, you know, you see yeah. the chest. Yeah, it's hard for me to stray from it. You see his it. chest and his back. Mm-hmm. Like, he got the muscles. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. fine. Like, I would challenge anybody that's looking for an upper body crawl. Come on down to the gym. We're going to cat crawl you next to Go to Joe. Mm. I want to see you cat crawl <laughs> like Go to Joe does. And then I want you to stand up and I want you to tell me, have you ever had a better upper body pump. You haven't. Mm. The other part of that issue is we talk about this with our baseball players. Arm care without foot care is no arm care at all. So you'll see these people doing bands in their crooked foot pushed in the front chain. Mm. You ain't actually speaking to the movement patterns that that athlete needs on the court. Andrew. Same thing. Same thing for <laughs> same thing for a Not basketball anymore, player. Though. Basketball player, right? I'm taking my shot. So much has to be done on the lower half to organize to stay in a position where you're gonna you know, adhere to the global laws to shoot the shot the best way. So anything you're seeing dynamic from an upper half movement in sports, even an O-lineman negotiating the forces through the hands, all of that is going down into the foot. So the total system organization to us overrides this compartmentalized, trenched, somewhat, you know, isolated thinking. We we go away from that. Mm. Like everything starts macro, 40,000 foot view. Oh my gosh, it's a hurricane. It's energy move around the corner. We never go into the isolated unless I'm just trying to get you to tap into a certain part. Like, hey, Mark, check out that foot, that hip, but then come back and zoom out and see the whole piece working together. So when we're training our baseball players or we're training our O-linemen, they're using their hands, but keeping that back chain dominance and that inside ankle bone high. So while that's closer, once again, what would be 100% optimal based off the tape? It would be making sure that the whole system is paying homage while we work so that it's closer to mimicking what the movements are going to play out yeah. like when we actually get to it, the But field. Gary, I've seen Bam and the guys with with the weight vest and the 25 here mm. and the 25 in yeah. the back and a 50-pound kettlebell. I mean, they, they got 150 pounds mm. yeah, working no, in the that, back yeah. chain. Well, that's what I was telling Mark yesterday was is we're not necessarily not using weights. We're just not using them in a traditional sense. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? We're just doing it a little different. Do you have and, barbells and, and dumbbells and stuff like that at your gym? Y- yeah, we have, yeah, we just yeah. put them on their heads. Now, so they now, can now I will say this: <laughs> about four or five years ago, we threw out about seventy thousand dollars of equipment. Mm. And when I say mm. throw it out, I put it on the street. Mm. Oh shit! When when I when I told Gilly, Gilly, what kind of equipment? Uh, fucking reverse hypers and Re- ro- all rope bells, shit. Yeah. A, a lot of a lot of diff- different shit, like hammer strength type stuff. Just di- machines, yeah, machines kind of and shit. stuff. Any kind of stuff like that. We put out there skiers, trap bars, skiers, trap, trap bars, bars yeah. things. You know, and we had good shit. Like you know, I, I took uh, I had a couple of different treadmills that we were using, and uh, I walked away from that. Now I use a uh, speed tread. Now both you guys have had a lifting background before, right? 
I, I didn't, but I lifted all my athletes. I right. haven't done shit. But you had them, you had them <laughs> squatting and deadlifting and stuff. But then you yeah, got we did. rid of those we, movements. Yeah, right? we got all got rid of all of that. What what happened was is when Gilly came to the, when when Jamal Chase had the injury, we already had two guys that was doing it. It was it was it was Joe that was kind of starting to get into it, and 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 Donald Clay Jr. is is uh he's he's the first recoded uh, growth plate athlete. So we had a grown man, and then we had a a growth plate athlete, an adolescent. Which those two factors are important too, because it's easier to recode the adolescent because he's still growing, right? But he also could be tougher from the behavioral standpoint outside of mm. the the gym, meaning the like he might be sitting yeah, down that. playing a video game when he's not with you. But um, when Gilly came to me with all of this stuff, and I I, I was like, I bought the iPad, I started watching. I'm like, all right, listen, because he was just renting a little space from me in the front. I'm like, Gilly, it's time. He's like, what? What is time for? I'm like, it's time for you to either fucking put some money into this thing, because another thing too was is brick and mortars are tough. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Well, I was drowning, and, and you know, and and then if I was going to change a system, I had to have a level of comfortability to make that change, which was going to free up my creativity too inside of this thing. Because he was like, dude, I don't give a fuck what goes on on that turf as long as it's inside ankle bone high and back chain dominant. And I'm like, well, now I got to fucking think again. <laughs> Because I've been listening to what everybody else been mm-hmm. saying. You know what I'm saying? So when he did that, I was like, look, come in. Come in as a partner. And then that's what we did. And, I mean, I would I say a, that. Uh, I got kind of a quick question And those here. two kids still haven't got hurt. I got a little bit of a quick question here. I've seen you guys use, you know, kind of almost like a slant board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like slant mm-hmm. board type of thing. Yeah, there's Coach Arnold. And it's, it, it's to kind of slant the feet, I guess, like <laughs> outward uh, towards – the pinky toe, like shift some of the balance towards the uh, the outside of the foot, and the and keep people mm-hmm. on their toes, sort of deal. Um, do you think that something could just be put in a shoe? Like, could somebody have a so, little bit of a th- kind of me- shiv type thing in the shoe <laughs> to push them that way, or is that a really horrible idea? That, it, no, I, I wouldn't do it to, mm. because an orthopedic don't work. Yeah, you want you, already, you want your you body got to do it. Yeah, it's got to be say, behavioral. Spot on. It's got to be conscious to become subconscious, right? So, in order for us to do that, that what you're seeing with the slant boards and stuff like that is 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 more on a Recoding side. Mm-hmm. When you get down to the gym and we going wide open, you might not have. We might not have boards out there. Yeah. We want to get you off the board. We want to get you onto the surface. Think of it as training wheels. Yeah, exactly. So you had said something earlier about people not having awareness, mm-hmm. and the way I used to coach before Gary uh, made me go to the floor was I would keep them inside ankle bone high without no support. And then I would get these issues like with Jamar. We got in a big fight one day. He almost kicked my ass right <laughs> down the floor um, where he couldn't, he couldn't do it. And I'm like, I went, and, I went and took a slam board and I pitched it sideways and, blah, 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 and I said, get up on here. And then the inside ankle bone went high. And we got, we got some, some sense of kinesthetic awareness. And I think if you start people on a board and then wean them down to the grass, it just helps speed up the process. Mm. But I mean, these guys can coach with no boards. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just a tool in in, in the chest. What uh, what kind of pain were you in? You were in pain for a long time. Yeah, well, I have three degenerative discs. I'm an I was an early adopter to Woda. So I mean, I just one of those kids that got it and got it bad. I did everything wrong. I, um, we used to wear tidy whities in the '70s, and I got a little thick. I'm a little thick guy, so I. My the uh, the skin between my legs, my thighs started to rub together like fire. And back then there was no jockeys, you know. So I started walking with a with a wide stance. And then I'm a big guy, so I was an offensive lineman in, in middle school and in, in high school. My doctor told me to stop because I I got Osgood Slaughter, which was the first sign of my woda. So uh, so I got this, these big bumps underneath my knees. So that turned into that duck walk turned into. But I always loved the the weights I had. At 13. You used to walk with your feet pointed out? Not what? when I was bit. No, at 12 years old, I was this goat. I was bitty basketball all star. It took about three years for me to woe to find myself. When I was high school, I got cut off my high school basketball team. And the exact words of my coach was, You got bad, bad feet. feet, bad hips. That, and I'm like, I want to fix it. I don't wanna, <laughs> I, I've never been cut off a high school basketball team. I said, I don't know how to fix that. You just got it. Yo. Yeah. And then I got cut. And, I, and you know, and that was it for me. That was my career. But. But uh, now your feet are pointed like at each other when you you're standing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And look, um, when I was 21 years old, I was back squatting, warm up weight, 
And this is another thing that Ricky keeps saying. Well, if you've been back squatting since you was 13 and here you are 21 and you just take a 45 pound bar and a couple of 25s to warm up, you have a back episode. Mm. Um, it didn't work, right? All those, mm -hmm. all those inputs didn't, didn't, didn't strengthen my back. So, you know, and a couple of years later, I had another back episode and, and then I started having two a year and then three a year and then I went and got an image and I lost my L5S1. And then, but it turns into what's called chronic pain after a while. It never goes away. The first few, when I was 21 to 23, I got them six weeks later, I felt normal. But then when I was about 25, he started getting real. And then, mm -hmm. but what it is, is it's, it's level. So sometimes it's just, soreness, discomfort. Sometimes it feels like there's an ice pick in your back and it never goes away. And when it doesn't go away after a year, you know you got problems. But I had six chiropractors in eight years. I had a biomechanical doctor. I had, and then I had, how did you stumble upon this stuff? Well, it started about two weeks before I was going to have a, a cage put in my back. And uh, when I was young, younger, I was like a voracious reader on uh, business development. I was following Tony Robbins and a bunch of those guys. And uh, they taught me how to goal set and do all this cool stuff and, and be, and be, and, and take chances. So, um, so, you know, I was on Tony's website one night doing his neuro linguistic programming. I think he changed it to NAC or something like that. But, and he had a little thing. He said, this guy saved my knee. If you got pain in your body, you should do this. And he turned me on to PD Goscue, which was my original mentor. And Pete's work is posture and function. His posture belief system is aligning the gyroscopes collinear, but he calls it load-bearing joints. And from the side view, he calls dynamic tension, which I'm 100% against because indigenous people don't have dynamic tension. That would mean you would move backwards the same amount of time you would move forward. So we call it back chain dominance. So my second, so I postponed surgery December 1999, and I never did have surgery. He got me out of back pain just with posture and function work. Mm. But what he couldn't do was, when I started doing triathlons in 08, a decade later, I started getting hip pain because um, I, I was a reverse mover. And nobody in the organization, and I'd become a postural assessment specialist because I love the work, but I couldn't figure out how to get out of hip pain mm. when I started running again and I wanted to figure it out. So I started looking around and I found Noelle Perez. She died two years ago. She was from France. She was a documentary and she was an artist and she stumbled upon back chain dominant by drawing indigenous people. And then she put three ladies on the street in America, Jean Couch, Noelle Perez and Kathleen Porter, but they taught it in a static environment. So I studied their work and I said, oh, there's secret number two, pop, pop. And then watching indigenous people in, in um, slow motion video after a few years, I'm like, man, everybody's in that grok squat. Man, they're always in that grok squat. And you know, you talk about Kelly and, and I got nothing but good things to say about Kelly, the human being. Um, and he did me a big fave, like back in 11. I called him up. I was like, man, I'm an EGOSQ coach. He said, dude, just professional courtesy. Just come on over. But what got my attention with Kelly was he would drop down in that grok squat. And I was like, just something here. So I was just looking, but the pain was bad. I was suicidal. When I was 33 years old, my little boy was three. He wanted to wrestle with me and I couldn't. Uh, there was a night where I wanted to commit suicide. It had gotten that bad. And what happens is uh, the body's not meant to live in all that pain. So you start to kind of see red and then you're like, okay, this is my life now. It, can I do this for another? I'm 33. And that little boy's like, his rite of passage is to wrestle with his dad. And I couldn't do it. And, and you know, and there was some things sexually that I could not do, like any position but the bottom. And at 33, when you have bonafide stud and you can't do that it, you you okay with checking out and and i was right there you know and i made it back awesome how about for you how did you get yourself out of pain these these cats right here i mean i was like i told you a little bit from freshman year sophomore year of high school i'd always have these back episodes every now and again the back would tweak i'd have to take two three weeks off it kept going it kept going and i really started to look at movement when i was going into the nfl draft because i felt that my skill set was not going to match what was needed at the next level and i was i was right <laughs> it didn't and so i was always looking 
for how do I get the ball out of my hand quicker? How do I deliver the pass more accurately? Why is my left hip burning up? Why is, so I was in this like, I want to stay on an NFL team. I want to I want to play, but my body's not giving me the clearance to do that from a pain standpoint and from a performance standpoint. So during really those years from 2011 to 2019, I was just looking anywhere for any sort of something that would give me, you know, an answer to help me stay on a team. And I would just put little pieces together. And really the breakthrough for me came when, I read a book called Muscles and Meridians that led me to Spinal Engine, and it was about nature and Spinal Engine, and those two things brought me to Gilly and Gary, and they were the only ones linking that, man, there's a wave motion motion going on here, and it's located in nature, and I was like, I'm in. And then Gilly's like, get yourself an iPad and start watching tape. And I'm like, dude, watching tape's all I've done since eighth grade because I'm a quarterback. <laughs> so I got the I had this big, beautiful bookshelf with all these movement books. And now this man comes in here, he's like, grab the iPad. And it was probably one conversation at nighttime where we were going back and forth in the DM and he was talking about the squat and he was talking about the heels down. And then he showed me a, an ACL shred and it was like, it was a eureka moment. Like it was done. Like my cup was so empty. I had two cups that were empty. I was like, someone fill this shit up with, with real answers. Cause I can't handle it anymore. And that was the moment where I was like, Oh, we're, we're patterning the heels down in the <laughs> weight room. And then I'm taking the heels down to the field. And it was just like, Oh shit, this is it. We got to go. And then it was just shit within three weeks. I was, we were on regular calls with each other. Cause I was, the cup was empty. My back had been still going out at that point you know, here and there. And then I hear G Gilly's story and I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to be in a cage. Oh shit. My left hip, what Gilly sees on tape is that's going to be a hip replacement. Yep. That's going to be a knee on my right side. My dad has, he was a double knee replacement candidate. So all these things came, you know, kind of flooding towards me. And I was like, wow, this is it. This is what I've been looking for for almost close to a decade. Um, and since that day that I knew how to get my hips back, no back pain. Mm -hmm. You know, since that day, I knew how to get my feet underneath me, the knee goes away. And it's just like, Shit, like this is so powerful. I, I, I will say this. Um, the, most talent the most talented people in the world like Ricky are going to come find us. Because what I've done is I've given people the right to raise their hand and say, I'm hurting too. Mm. So what, what happens is I introduce them to this mathematical equation we call GOTA, primal wisdom, spiral wave. And then I just let nature take its course. And what happens with these guys is three or four years later and they fired up because they, they know the, where they were four years ago and they couldn't run and they had back episodes and their hips hurt and their knees are aching and then they're four years older and they feel 10 years younger than when they started. A thousand percent. So nature is now speaking to them, as he always says. It's just the best transferable technology you're ever going to use. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't even like to call it fitness or sports performance. I just call it nature's way. We are a representation, our human body, of a wave. This is just our version of a wave. Each one of you has an awesome comeback story. And you were sharing with me that you had drug and alcohol issues. Mm -hmm. How'd you come back from that? Because that's not an easy thing to figure um, out. Really, you know, I... <sighs> And and not I'm not I'm I'm a very spiritual spiritual person I, I'm not a uh, holy roller or anything like that but um, I I was traveling around the country I was coaching and stuff and I was playing this underhand softball circuit and I slid in the second one week and just trying to you know live out the dream that I never did and and because uh, I played baseball but. Um, I slid in a second to him. I showed up, went to the emergency room. I got a cortisone shot, a bottle of Viking, and then 11 yeah, years later, yeah. I'm sitting on a corner with nothing but a Boost mobile phone with my mom on the other line telling me that it's over. You're not going to see your daughter no more. I had a 10-year-old, 9-year-old at the time. And um, this is it. Like, don't come to us no more. You can't. I, and I was basically bouncing couch to couch. I had a car full of while sleep in the car. Or, you know, I, I was at the hospital because I'd spend the night in the hospital every now and then. Like, just trying to, you know, lay in the emergency room. Just sit there. Like, I was waiting for somebody or something like that. And um, I was sitting out there on that corner one day. And uh, I was dope sick. I was in bad withdrawals. And, and I ran out of minutes on my phone. And and when that happened, there was this, like, man, something in my stomach, like this pit, and it was that bottom. You know, they, they talk about that bottom that you got to hit. And I was like, God, like, I, I know I'm more talented than this. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I know I'm better than this. I know I know my parents did better for me than this. They gave me the opportunity, and I never took it. And I kind of got up at that moment, and I found my way to God. It had some pills or something. I took them. I got myself out. Of, I called my mom up. I'm like, look, I'll fucking do anything. Send me to rehab. Send me wherever you want. I went that day. The, the next day, I went into, uh, and I actually wrote a book called Recoded. <laughs> Imagine that, right? <laughs> Recoded the Gary Scheffler story or whatever, and uh, addi- addiction story, or uh, addict story. Get recoded an addict story, but um, at at that, I went into treatment, and I was in detox, and not you know the I got I got the dope sick out of me and all of that stuff, and then immediately the brain starts going back into the addict behavior and addict mentality. And I'm like, man, I'm just going to go. I'm going to do this little 30 day program somewhere else. My parents are going to let me back. You know, you got it all figured out. And some guy grabbed a hold of me one day and he said, Hey man, listen. Um, and we start talking and he's, you know, he's got like five years sober, some shit like that. And I'm like, uh, he's like, dude, Man, you talented, dude. You got you've been coaching your whole life. You an athlete. You know, you played ball. I thought I was an athlete. But um, it, you know, he he was like, you can save somebody's life. And I'm like, you know what? Fucking saving somebody's life sounds better than destroying my own. Mm. So at that moment right there, I decided that I was never gonna go back to that. And eleven and a half years later. And there you go, dog. I never did. That's it. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> it's uh amazing that you guys like, you know, all found each other. <laughs> and, uh, so super cool. We're on the guys. same vibration. That's what I always say. It's like yeah. it's a frequency, and you tap into it, and we find these people. They're vibing off of that. Like they're 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 looking. It's the it's the empty cup. It's the white belt white belt mentality. Mm-hmm. You're looking for answers, and they're always pointing back to nature. And you just got this cat over here pointing his finger. Like look there. That was one of the cool things with Gillies. He never told me anything. He's just go look, see it for yourself. Prove me wrong. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. here we go. And then <laughs> it, I learned through that just. I learned through nature. You learn through what you're you're looking at. You know, it's not anybody yeah. telling if you, you. If you point people in the right direction, they're going to be okay because they're going to try to prove you wrong. That's all I'm asking. Prove me wrong. Show yeah. me. Show Find me. Us I'm, an show me. Inside ankle bone high, non-contact, mm-hmm. catastrophic injury. Find one. Mm-hmm. Like what yeah. you saw with that Alabama kid. Mm-hmm. Find me one like that where the inside, inside ankle, ankle bone's high and he sets a bone and he corners it, mm-hmm. but don't he happen. blows his knee. It just mm-hmm. can't happen. I used to do crazy stuff like. And I, if you find one, I'll give you ten thousand dollars. <laughs> People be like looking for it. Yeah, hey, never come back. Find, if you find <laughs> one, he'll give you ten thousand dollars. <laughs> no, but, Fuck that. but, give me but I do have one. I do have one, and it's back to the planes of motion. So right. I've got a picture of a little. I don't know if it's a Jamaican kid, but it's, it looks like they're from the islands, and they're doing a hundred. And um, the one kid is real fast, but he's bow legged. Mm. Bow-legged has to be mitigated. It's, it's hard to get rid of it completely, but mm. bow-legged by default means you have a linear technology laterally. Mm. Um, and man, this kid was running, boom, 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 and then the bow started to go lateral instead of rotary. Mm. So, and I was like, <laughs> it got so bad, man, he came down, blew out oh, his head, LCL. But that's not Goda. Bow-legs is not Goda. We're we're a mm-hmm. we're a foot and ankle complex with a tornado above it, so uh, it's not linear. It's not supination. It's not, yeah, because yeah, somebody tried to throw me under the bus. They tried to throw me under the bus saying, "Bro, you you teaching bow leg?" I'm like, mm-hmm. no, "I'm not teaching bow leg." I know you're enjoying this clip, but listen up. We have this beef company, Piedmontese Beef, that no matter what diet you're doing, whether it's low fat, high fat, carnivore, keto, whatever, they have perfect cuts that are going to fit your diet perfectly. And the cool thing, Andrew. Mm-hmm less connective tissue so you're not going to have those grisly nasty things that you have to spit out when you eat beef that's what those are that's what those are oh and so piedmontese doesn't have that they don't have that because the cows are jacked lack of connective mm-hmm. tissue buttery when you cut into it amazing taste so andrew how can they get some piedmontese yes sir it's over at piedmontese.com that's p-i-e-d-m-o-n-t-e-s-e.com at checkout enter promo code power for 25 percent off your order and if your order is 150 dollars or more you get free two-day shipping again that's at piedmontese.com promo code power Let's go ahead and get back to this podcast. Well, that's the whole trying right. to figure out the Andrew, from I'm, not yeah. I'm not teaching Bolet. <laughs> Andrew I'm seen bowling. it last night, right? Yeah. The guy gets on there and he's like, hey, hey, make sure you tell Mark Bell how you hate him and he's destroying everybody's joints in America. He's, uh, what is it? It was like giving knee cancer or something. Yeah, shit giving, like that. yeah, yeah. yeah that, that power lifting is the cancer to, to uh, connective tissue that's or something. So and it's like, hey. we made comments. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like full accountability. It obviously works. That dude's yeah. been triggered. Oh, dude, he was. Said. Yes. He's been Listen, running that tape in his mind. The like, oh, fact that you brought us on this show is going to be like, 
two things is going to happen. Number one, they're going to be pissed for a second, and then mm-hmm. they're going to say, well, fuck if Mark Bell's doing it. Yeah. 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 So, Mark did rockers. I'll give yeah, him a try. Fuck it. Uh, We're going to try it. I'll yeah. try some air chairs. But only because Mark Bell <laughs> yeah, did it. Not because, not because y'all said so, right. right. Hey, yeah. uh, yeah, no, and, and I'd like to say something because I had to do something that I'm still not ashamed of, but... But, you know, I had to come out and be kind of a bully, which is not even me. I'm an affable, I'm affable, affable. I mean, I play golf four days a week. We gamble, we drink beer. You know what I'm saying? We, that's we hang a, out. Yeah. But I couldn't sit there on that couch and watch it anymore. Mm. I, I, I was there in 11 and I had the math and uh, I didn't really know how to coach it well. Uh, I knew I had the three pre-movement fundamentals and the, and the traveling drills and the stuff on the inside, me and Gary figured out later. But, but um but I could create goaders, you know, and um, but I could see that I needed to represent people who didn't have a voice. And these teenagers don't have a voice. They're being forced to lift. I did. I signed up to be you. I wanted to be a good looking guy with the six pack abs, with the jaw. I, but I didn't sign up for back pain. I didn't sign up for three degenerative discs. I didn't sign up for a decade of losing high quality time. When you're in your 20s. This is it. That's when you climb the Himalayas. That's when you surf in Hawaii. That's when you you're having a good time. And I didn't get. I missed it. Mm. You know, I missed. I'm, de- I lost a decade. Yeah, that's why I tell these guys up uh, because they pretty much run in the institute. Now I'm like, I I don't want to be here if I don't have to. I, <laughs> yeah. I want to be playing golf. I lost ten years of my life. But um, but I apologize really to anybody who I, I've, I've really hurt yeah. their feelings. But we're, we're healers. Who, 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 we didn't even have a voice because they would just drown us out. But the math wins. Mm. Best practices always win. And I knew we would be here one day. I didn't know how, but I knew if I just kept fighting for people's knees and fighting for their hips and fighting for their spines, and sooner or later, people would say, yeah, we do have a problem. We can no longer ignore these 10 million people every year growing at 15% having unexplained joint repair and replacement surgeries. We can't ignore it. It's right. And you know, what they used to tell me is, well, you know, it's because people gain weight. And I'm so glad I did 67 sprint triathlons. I did them at 280. I did them at 270. I did them at 250. One year I got all the way down to 240 and I was running sub 10s off the bike. Like for me, a big guy to run under 10 minute miles off the bike. Uh, so I did it at the highest weight, 280, and at, at two, That's and crazy. I'm still doing it. So it's not weight; it's mm. movement and efficiency. Mm. What you got, Andrew? Uh, in the in the gym, I was joking, but I'm like, what the fuck took you guys so long to get here? Because <laughs> I am so grateful that we've all met and you guys have come out here. And I mean, it's gonna I'm gonna make it my job to make this the like most popular episode we've ever done. This wow. like I mean, yeah, having, sure. having you guys here That's has huge. been phenomenal um but when we were working together you you, uh the first day with the assessments uh you saw three different athletes you know myself i you know back pain uh fairly stuck mark you know has a couple nagging injuries a little bit more stuck in certain areas and then chris bell who was very stuck with two fake hips you know he kind of you know he dipped out from time to time we're like no get back here let's Mm -hmm. keep working um for people that are very stuck they're kind of almost probably at a crossroads like, well, this shit's working for now. It's not the greatest, but man, that's a long road to fix everything. I might as well just keep going this way. Mm-hmm. How soon can somebody start to see some benefits? Like even if they have to regress, like uh, you guys called them, um, uh, when we when, when Chris couldn't do some of the movements, you called them something in, in instruction. Uh, I forgot what you call Correct. 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 Yeah, correctives. Correct. correctives. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Sorry. Yeah. So we- even with that, like how, like, like, what does that road look like for somebody that is like really, really stuck? Um, those, like I said before, those people tend to, they get like, I, I, I got to find what's right, right? So everything's like a crossroad, let's say. Every exercise is a crossroad. And, 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 I, and I learned a lot of this from Gilly. Like, I had the opportunity that I made him work in the beginning like he didn't get to play golf four days a week before he was in the gym four days a week with me because i'm like dude i gotta know what the fuck you know Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so he we would get these people that would come in and i would he was basically yesing and knowing a lot of my 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 programming and stuff to the point where it's like gary stop bringing this shit to me you good you got it now And, and, and and but with the correctives sometimes it's not the stuff that you see in this do 
on social media, it stays very close to the math, but you might have to change things. Like Chris has the the one side that's more bold than the other. I had to find an exercise that worked for him, mm. and we found it at the end with the mitigator. Now, I could give him a heavy dosage of that to kind of draw that knee in, and he's like, man, you know, my, my knee feels good now. Like, I don't, I don't feel that same little bit of pain. So everybody's different. The other thing, too, is, is, is how much are they willing to put into it? Again, it's like everything else in life, right? It's not hard work. I loved when you said that. It's work. Work is just getting out there and doing you know, getting past that whole thing, well, I don't feel like getting on the ground today. And then three days later, they're back in knee pain. Mm -hmm. So the more of the good input that you give, the better. So we could get the same result as far as pain level goes with a high-level athlete that we could get with a grandma that's on the couch all day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on what they're willing to put yeah. into it. Th th that's a good segue for me f to help Mark. Um, so, Mark, I lived in the front chain with the duck feet. <clears throat> And tore up my back for so long that when I decided uh, to work with Pete and get my posture right, and then I decided to to play the game of of Goda, the, the math of Goda. I I said, well, I, I lived like this for so long. I'm going to code myself slightly pigeon-toed, like like Ed Reed, because <laughs> if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. But I don't want to be in those places that I was for, for uh, up until I was 44. I mean, you know, I just don't want to go there. So I'll, I, you can do whatever you want and go to. You can have a big toe straight. You can have a tech second, second toe straight. You can be back chain nine degrees, eight degrees, as long as you click. It's a ballpark. The, the human body's amazing. It's, it's got an ability to be very resistant. You just got to be close. The problem is, is we're not even close. Mm -hmm. Makes sense a little bit? Yeah. Absolutely. And then um, can somebody like, I, or maybe how about this? Is there some movements or something like that's like step one for people to start noticing something so they can be like, mm -hmm. whether it be back pain, knee pain, what can it be? What can they do right now? Like they're listening, maybe. Right I, man, like what, what? I got, I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And an, it's called an awareness, an awareness, not drill, but an awareness exercise. Let me uh, just butt in just for yeah, a second. Ahead. If you go to get on the ground and the ground hurts, mm -hmm. you have a problem. Yeah, thousand percent. Even if the ground is kind of like, even if the ground's uh, kind of like uh, not soft, if the ground is soft and you get on the ground and it hurts your knees and your feet and your ankles, you have an even bigger problem. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Got to address Spot that. On. A Andrew, uh, an an mm -hmm. another thing too is is. We, we have a website, go to movement.com. You could go there. There's DIY courses. There's DIY workouts. There's a link to fi find a go to coach. Anything that you want is available to you there. Wherever you want to start and get in there and get a little intro, mm -hmm. if you want to start with a DIY course or something like that, they I, I built the, a, a, the a, another phase of it where it's weekly workouts and stuff to where these people could go to that page and you could find everything. If you're somebody that wants to be in the gym with a go to coach, we got it mapped out where the go to coaches are. Everything is is found at go to movement.com. So, it, you know, it's just that one landing place where you can mm -hmm. find everything. Perfect. Yeah, that's what well, I was going to build up to. Mm -hmm. It's like if somebody can follow something like a program yeah. on their own. Yeah. You want to see the you want to see the show? You go oh, on the Instagram so, page. Uh, yeah. So, Andrew, so here here is a good awareness show. So, and I and and yeah, I had to have the intuition enough to believe some of the stuff that I, that I was a woad. I had I had a and one of the things I did to identify it was I I'd be in the shower, and my wife um, would have been in there with the oils and all that, and I would get in the shower, even though I did 10 years worth of posture work, and I'd get in the shower, and you know, and all of a sudden I looked down, my knees, my feet would be pointing out, and then I'd put them straight, and then I'd put, and then it would be out, and I was like, what, why is the oil, is it the oil? <laughs> Did, your posture, your sh the way you present yourself is unconscious, so the movement is unconscious. So when I put my foot down in that or some sand, some slippery sand, and all of a sudden the feet go out, you woulda. Because you're you're like a sponge, the fascia and all this connective to you. So it's just gonna go to what the sponge is. You mm -hmm. take a sponge, you let it dry a certain way, it's crooked, that's who you are. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. about when you go to squat down? I've noticed that for me, when I go to squat down, my toes will automatically yeah. want to go out. You have no length. Correct. It's, it's the ankle being locked up. We call that access. You don't yeah. have access. Mm. Back chain. If that foot is straight, like we talk about that platform that is my foot, it, it needs, the word would kind of be like some disassociation there. Because that ankle, that shin bone that's sitting plugged into the foot, 
it's a ball and socket. So it's got to have its ability to turn. So when you see someone go to turn the foot out, it's because the ankle's locked up. You're trying to match the foot to the hip because the ankle don't do it no more. So your foot and your ankle just become this glued concrete piece that you have to open up your body. so that your hip can get there. That's why we readjust. give you the rockers. We give you the you know the yeah. toe tuck and the, and the bolts to try to get the foot straight. But from an awareness drill standpoint, Andrew, to kind of speak back, mm -hmm. I think just standing is a really good one that, because we put a, you know we put Chris on the ground and his knees started to bark. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there might be some people out there listening that they go down, they might get frustrated. But a really cool standing drill is the old hips against the counter. So most of us, if you picture yourself standing at a counter, everybody leans that hip against the counter. Everybody right now can, can visualize that. Pull your hip off the counter. That's you moving into the back chain, getting that hip to play behind the rib. Now go back and put your hip against the counter. Go crooked foot, go inside ankle bone low. Feel how everything funnels down and in to the front side. It gets compressed. Now take your hip or first bring your feet closer together and then pull your hip away from the counter and get your inside ankle bones high. Now you'll feel the system lengthen out. That's a great little inside ankle bone high, back chain dominant awareness drill kind of wrapped into having some sort of tactile feedback with an object in front of me that I can start to kind of, oh, okay, I don't want to go that way. I want to start trending this way. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of that beginning piece that we want to give to people is the education and the awareness. Yeah. If I'm just aware of it at first, I can start to build this momentum to make that recode. Like you would ask about, okay, someone like Chris, how do we start? I look at it as like my WODA, whatever I saw in my assessment is this big, heavy rock that's shaped like a, a, a ball. And when I start to push that ball, the first couple yards, the first, it's hard, it's slow. As I build momentum, I start to pick up speed and it gets easier to push that rock. So if you look at your recode sort of in the same way, at the beginning, it feels like, wow, damn, this is a lot. But as you start to build momentum, that sort of initial like, whoa, I'm so locked up, that changes in a week. Mm -hmm. And then two, week two is even better, week three. So it's a quick road to start moving in the right direction, but some people need a little bit of help, a little bit of awareness go reach out for a coach or start to look at some of those programs to see what fits you. And if you're having problems, you're still having pain, then you know you need someone there to help you and put you into a better spot. Yeah, and before I forget, it was so funny when they were doing our assessment, I swear, like I, I stood there for two seconds, they could figure out why my back was hurting within seconds. And I swear I heard Gary just be like, oh shit, like, yep. <laughs> we got some hey, work. Let, let me say something else <laughs> like, too. He, he, uh, he did the other uh, Ben Affleck eye roll. He was like, Jesus. Oh, here he goes again. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you something else too, because he said something, and I know somebody's going to say something out there. Yes, he did say the ankle is a ball and socket. Mm. And yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck what your history book <laughs> yeah. says. It's a ball and socket. Because well, we seem to behave at the highest yeah, level and like, the safest people. It's right there. The, 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 the design is right there. If you look under, that's the cadaver science people, they, they don't even got their own world right. I mean, they, they, you teach the ankle as a hinge. Where in, you know, where'd you get that from? Like, did you look at the talus? If you just look at it, I, mm. I challenge our coaches to do this. Go on to Pinterest or go on Google Images and type in the talus, type in these things. Don't worry about what it's called. That's just getting you to the visuals. Just look at it. There's, we, we laughed one time at a lab weekend. I go, Gilly, look. And he goes, what? I go, all the writing for that image of the foot is in German. Yeah. But it didn't fucking matter because we don't worry about the, 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 words. the words. We're looking at the structure. The like Gilly always goes up there and he's got, we got all these fractals of nature on the back wall, you know, showing up in flowers and in hurricanes. And Gilly will show the curve of the hurricane or sh the curve of the flower. And then he'll go to the foot and he'll show you the curve of the bones. Everything wants <laughs> to work that way. So just by looking under the hood, but going back to the movement first, right? Watching the tape, watching how it moves looking at its anatomy, watching how it moves, looking at its anatomy, like, oh, that's how it plays through space. That's see why the supination, pronation, mm -hmm. flex extend makes no sense. It doesn't add up when you yeah. put on the tape. So you got the tape and you've got that under the hood understanding and it's just, it's a powerful, yeah. it's, it's how we're able to look at you after a second and go, yep, left mm. side. I yeah. think you guys need to go to stick. You know, to just you smack people with it. I, I do have uh, a golf club, tried. a little mini golf club. I was going to bring it. It's it's kind of the, the size of this samurai, but it was nice. a it was a mini golf club. It was one of the first weekends hit people that I was down there. Yeah, yeah, that I was down there, and it was this. <laughs> Gilly was showing me through a golf club how the hip played, and I was like, oh, and I'm like, what if I just put a tennis ball? on the end of that uh, golf club. So it looks more like a ball and socket. And then we started to play around with it and we would use it to teach. But now mm -hmm. we use it as a stick to kind of, hey, look at your feet. Uh, tap the foot, tap the hip, move your hip back, get the ankle bone high. But yeah, it is. It's a discipline. You stick. know, uh, 
we always talk about what I call the collective delusion or the cognitive entrenchment, the inability to question. And I got to give Bam some love on this one because he, he was telling me this this morning. He said, you know, we go to school and we get the information from the teacher and then the teacher gives us a test. And then the answer to that test is, you know, yes, no, you get it right. It's yes, you get it, no. Then after a while, we are f we begin to program our brains to say, I got to answer the test right. And that you never pick up your hand and question. What's the Yeah. What's being You don't tested. have the right. Question so the now what happened to me, especially before you got here, Rick, and a few of you guys, and, and, and Gary watched me go through the hell of social media, but mm -hmm. people would say, where's the study? And I'm like... <laughs> What do you need to study for? I got 4K slow motion video. Right. I mean, this is this is the latest and greatest technology. The NFL uses it. The what NBA the uses system? it. I said, you go to a judge and he's got you on videotape raping somebody. You think they're going to say this ain't science? Yeah. And, and they would tell me slow motion video is not science, Coach Yo. You're you know you're a farce. You're Only a, a scientist would say that. <laughs> but I mean, they, they can't even they could people can't question mm. anything anymore. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. My back is speaking for everybody now. All the smartest people I ever met, they don't have the right answers. They got the right questions. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's the way I look at it. And you guys all have unconventional thought. And yeah. Kind of like, that's how you landed on this. Mm -hmm. By uh, your own life experiences, even pain being the ultimate teacher, giving you guys wisdom to investigate more like for yourself just investigating like i got more inside of me like i'm not mm -hmm. supposed this isn't yeah. my this isn't my life this is stupid i i'm way better than this yeah. i could figure this out and for you with uh the different pain that you had you're like i i can solve this you being a great athlete uh having all the exposure to sports all the exposure to all those different coaches over the years you're like why in the hell can't can't someone come along and help me and the answer to that is no they can't come along and help you. <laughs> you got to turn. You got to turn that question into, uh, when am I gonna? When am I gonna put the uh, onus on myself? And when am I gonna go and help myself? How do I help myself? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what all three of you guys have done great. And then now, you're in a position to help so many more people. Mm -hmm. yeah, Andrew, yeah, take yeah. us on out, yeah. everybody. All right. After one quick question. Oh, um, do, yeah, I, I have a, a stand, sit, sit to stand desk. I have this lumbar support. I have a couple of other things that I've gotten for myself in hopes that it's going to help with my back. They're going to say, throw it away. Are there <laughs> any products that are legitimately get a, uh, beneficial? Get a, get a nice Sazer chair. Yeah, and what's this? Uh, well, Sazer well, we can uh, send you some. Uh, uh, no, get a nice up? kneeling chair. How do you even spell that? Get a kneeling oh, chair. S -S -E get a good kneeling chair. Sazer. S E I. Do you want some spelling bees over there? S E I Z A. Dude, Rick's, Rick's the smartest one. The whoa, 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 listen, whoa, whoa, whoa. the way he answered hey, that question. Listen, yeah. he always he zoned in. It just look. Was like, we Caesar. always joke. We Caesar. always joke around Marjorie because Gilly Gilly's mm. owns up a, a company called ABC Title. They, they do five minute driver's license renewals and title companies and all. And we was like, you know, like this. it's crazy that a, yeah, a, a license plate salesman. A fucking junkie and a, a washed, <laughs> washed up, up quarterback, quarterback. <laughs> is going to be the ones to change the fitness industry. You know, uh, <laughs> Mark, you, you had said oh. something just now, and I was like, "Well, how how did I have the intuition to do this?" And this is what this is how it happened. Oh, First of all, I had to have a wrecked back to even be looking. Second, I because I'm a golfer, we adopted slow motion video in 1995. That's it. That's how to use it. Okay. Yeah, and then and Both then. Together. I had lucky enough because Tony Robbins and all the personal motivating people that I studied their work, I hustled until I had enough businesses cash flowing. Mm. And then once I had enough businesses cash flowing, then I could just get on a plane and say, I want to go see Egoscue Method. I want to go see Noel Perez's people. I want to go see Kelly. And I would just go to, and then the animal flow, and then the movement. And I would just go to, and I would just sit in those and just, what are they teaching? I don't know. But I'm looking for something. And then I would write stuff down until the geometry presented itself to me. I like yeah. that you started with the finances because that's actually really smart. And I, I think a lot of people, they'll say like, I don't really care about money and they, they get weird about it. But it's like, if the finances are there, it just makes everything more, way more convenient. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. Andrew, take us on out of here, All right, buddy. officially will. Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's episode. Uh, please, please, please uh, drop us a like and leave us a comment down below because I want this episode to uh, absolutely explode. And uh, make sure you guys are subscribed if you're not subscribed already. Uh, please follow the podcast at Mark Bell's Power Project on Instagram, at MB Power Project on TikTok and Twitter. 
my Instagram is at I am Andrew Z uh, and Twitter at I am Andrew Z. Make sure you guys follow Ensema. Uh, he was a little bit under the weather today and we didn't want to you know spread anything. So uh, follow him at Ensema Yang on Instagram at Ensema Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Links to everything down in the description below. Uh, Ricky, Gary and Coach Gilly, where can people find you online? Um, go to movement.com is, is yeah. the, is the mothership of the website. Mm-hmm. You'll find out all, all the products to go to shop. Everything's there. Go to coaches, DIYs, DIY workouts. Um, I'm at GLS training on, um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Rick. I'm at red pill, Rick. Um, red, is it underscore? Do I have red, underscore yeah, first? Yeah, and then pill, and then the dot. And then Rick, you just type my <laughs> we'll, name in. We'll link it. Don't You'll find yeah, it. And, and I'm at, at, at go to okay. underscore loco on IG. There's also go to performance team mm-hmm. too, which is kind of like what we're doing right now is we're developing a concept where these athletes come in and we do exactly what we did with y'all. They come mm-hmm. in on a Monday, we eval and we put them through three or four days of work and then they'll have the option to hire us after that point. We also got a YouTube at Go to Movement and an IG at Go to Movement that are kind of reflecting their fractal and that that mothership uh, of the website. So if you're looking for kind of some some di some, some info, free exercise too. or some more info from a visual standpoint, check that out on YouTube because there's some good stuff over mm-hmm. there as well. Yep. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you all later. Bye. <laughs>